and gentlemen. Hey. Oh, welcome to another episode of Honorable Discharge from Studio 395 in the beautiful city of San Diego. We got a good one for you today. This show is brought to you by our sponsor, Dos Desperados Brewery. You guys check them out in San Marcos, California. They are veteran owned and they make a tasty, tasty beer. Check them out. I am your man, Ron Ripley. With me as always is Mr. T.D. Cunningham. And we Hello. have a wonderful, wonderful show today. I, I couldn't sleep last night because I was, I was... Dude, I'm excited. Excited! Ladies and gentlemen. Not even the word. We, we're getting trailer classy today. We have in our studio, uh, AGT super, super boss, the very lovely Miss... Uh, Vicky Barbalak. One and, and only. Trailer nasty, trailer <laughs> discharge. <laughs> oh, that didn't sound right. That's wrong. Everyone's discharge is, is, is honorable <laughs> on this show. And while, Vicky, you are not a uh, former uh, military personnel, you are not a veteran, I do know that you do like to support the Camp Pendleton car washes. I am a big <laughs> supporter. You know what? I, I, I For me, every day is Veterans Day. So, you know, I, I welcome home the troops at any given day or time in any way I can. Cheers to that. Arm, Army, <laughs> Navy, Salvation Army. Merchant Old Marines. Navy, Merchant Marines. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm really grateful. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I always tell people when you come to San Diego, don't go to the zoo. You know, the animals are s- tired. <laughs> don't go to SeaWorld. That place is so weird. You know, they have a SeaWorld. Sea Wor- Did you guys see those signs? SeaWorld Summer Seafood Festival. Yeah. They, it was that place. was weird. They're liquidating the inventory. Yeah, yeah. It, to raise, they're in trouble. And, and so we, here's what you do in San Diego, ladies. When you're in San Diego, you come to Camp Pendleton, front gate. Every weekend, the Marines have the car washes, wearing little shorts, little tiny green shorts. <laughs> the silkies. Yeah. Oh, the silkies. That's what they're called. Oh, yeah. That's what they're called. And uh, they, they, while well, you sit in your car, they wash. It's like a $3 donation. You know, I might That's actually it. have a pair of silkies in the trunk of the car. If you could I, put I them on for the yet. rest of the podcast, yeah, I won't. and then we could film it, you guys could up, <laughs> your, up not, your listening audience yeah. by Boom. trillions. That's not out of the question. I would definitely go I'm change. A, I am a silkies guy myself. In, in our, how we do it is, Recon, you have one of the rites of passage is you get to wear a different color silky than anyone else. We get to wear the black silky. That's pretty slutty. Ooh, uh, stealth. So you can't see him. Can't see him coming. Nope. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. See what he did there? Yeah. Yeah. A little, 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 little pun, little play on words. Because we're all comedians, and uh, it's it, you got your start at, at the at the. Oh my God, the comedy story. Your history with them is so so extensive, and and old, old Tim here just just got got hired. He made uh, the cut. So uh, now, that's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. And, and just thank a big you. Old what, fam here. And I mean, honestly, that's what a lot of, I think for me, this, this episode is going to be me asking a lot of questions about your past and the comedy store. Cause I'm just, I, I'm a don't huge nerd fan out. of yours. Don't I make am. us I'm, look I'm like fucking it. fanboys here. I'm going to do We're it. Goddamn I am a, professional. I am You're a, a fucking boy. Marine. God damn it. I'm a fanboy Marine. I was really happy last night watching Ron set at the comedy store mm. because he's, you know, he, you really have, you started doing your your stuff about being a vet. I mean, it's so exclusive to you and it was so funny. You The way you talk about, you know, your PTSD and how your triggers are sobri- <laughs> sobriety. People. So it's not, sobriety people. people. It was just so hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh, own that. Just like I own... You know, living in Oceanside and having a marine base next to me. There is at any given day thirty four thousand gorgeous Just young men to look at. Hunky men <laughs> in the, the prime physical physical peak of I, their existence. I kayak at Camp Pendleton because of, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the, the 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 border that you know makes the makes mm-hmm. the harbor between mm-hmm. the sea. The Marines run up above. Yep. So when I'm kayaking, I can see up in their silkies. Oh, they have awesome. no idea. So you <laughs> no probably I mean, I'm sure Tim looked has an idea. My, you've seen it probably uh, have been gawking at me running I that. I've run that yes. area yes. in formation many Thank a time. Thank you for your service. <laughs> I appreciated it so much. I think it's funny how you said that too, the, um, the part about 
it, where Ron was doing what he know, like the the veteran service. I was actually I, I saw a post for Joe Urell, the uh, he's um, a disabled comedian up at the store in L.A. And he said some uh, person is he, who had does he is he working there or performing? I but I mean he's there all Mi- the time. Oh, Mitch Burrow. No, no, Joe Bur- or Urell. The, the Joe he's in Burrell. a wheelchair. He's got MS. You've oh. seen him. Uh, he did the roast battle with uh, the transgender com- uh, comedian Robin, Robin Tran. Tran. Yeah. yeah, he he was approached by someone at the store. Uh, I guess last night he was posting about it that like someone who hadn't done comedy since 1988 had just challenged me to write 15 minutes of uh, material that has nothing to do with my disability. And it's like, why? Why would you? That's what he knows. Like, are you going to tell, uh, you know, no one tells Dave Chappelle to not do material. Hey, I dare you to not do material about your experience or who you are. It's just. I think it's a comedy I think, challenge. I yeah, it's a good challenge. To... But how he said it was kind of a dick move well, how he I mean, said yeah, it to him, you know the delivery is everything yeah it's weird like how people constantly just come up and just drop turds in your lap that yeah. you don't need <laughs> you know I, but and that's, yeah, i got a joke for you hey, vicky why don't you, you know, tell you all about it actually though i do get a lot of jokes from random people well, bad. i'm serious like even audience members give me jokes at the end of shows they go i mean they're not you know they're sometimes of course they're not usable but especially being on the road a lot lately I'm not kidding you. People go, this is a great new joke. And I, oh, you I got him? For I fought him to this guy at the end. Yeah. Like, you, what, do you, what do you say to them when they give you like a shitty joke, but you're trying to be like sweet about it? Or, well, or you say, just like, you should write that. Yeah, I say things. Put that on the fridge. You don't know whatever you're given. It's, it, 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 like sometimes you're given something and you resist it. I resist everything that I'm given first. Like that's not going to work. Yeah. And then I go, well, maybe I should just try it. And and then you try it. You go, it does, it does or not work, but you, you should try it because yeah. why not? It might work. Obviously, there's some things you know are stupid, but, I, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I mean, I'm, I always have the ears open. But I mean, just to walk up to somebody who's disabled, it's like telling me, Vicky. Well, I used to get this a lot. You know, Vicky, you can lose weight and you'll still be funny. Yeah. This one comic who will remain nameless. <laughs> she she used to be fat and now she's thin, and she's she just just constantly like try to get me to go on a diet. Like, and she thought the reason I'm fat is I'm like, do you think? I mean, Amy I, Schumer, I will eat no, you. No, it wasn't her. <laughs> no. She thought no. like you were staying, you were She's purposely like, yeah, trying purposely to. Stay fat. Do you think I'd risk that, you know, not getting laid by gorgeous men just to keep funny? No. Yeah. Uh, this is My a, silky game I is so strong. I just don't want to eat less, okay? <laughs> yeah. Exercise. That is the issue. And it, it is. It's just so, like, it's so punching down to talk to someone like that. It's like, man, he's doing comedy. He's doing well. But, he had a great set. People were laughing. And instead of just, just go up. Keep but you know what's interesting, though, is. It's like I feel like, uh, you know, I didn't do veteran material for the longest time because I didn't want to be like, oh, Sergeant Ron up there. Guess what? Ron's on stage. We're going to hear about, you know, that one time in Iraq. So I, I held back on that. And then I started, you know, I think it was like smoking and joking in the parking lot, like like with Lou yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's like, well, you should tell that. Well, you know, and, and you hear it from around. And so I just started to do it. I just didn't want to be, you know, pigeonholed, I guess, into anything specifically until I feel felt right about it. I purposely don't do any military stuff. You've noted. And well, you could get fucking fired, dude. I'm amazed you're doing this. Yeah. And and the the reason I don't was specifically because with how many veterans are in San Diego, how much the their their support here. I didn't want yeah. to go and basically for five years of my career do a bunch of veteran material and then find out that people are supporting it and applauding because of the, not the material itself, but because of what the material is, the, the fact that it's better. And then I get on the road thinking, um, oh, I'm, I'm killing it. And then I get in a, yeah, some no, place and they're just that. like, those aren't strong jokes, but no one had the you know, it's, to it's, tell what, you. I, what he's talking about is basically like the, the comedy equivalent of, of thank you for your service. You know, right. it's just, you just mm-hmm. say it in Walmart like, oh, he's on stage. He's a veteran. Let's give it to him. You know, good for him. And yeah. that's, yeah, I, I, get, I get that. I understand that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And, and the other thing is, I mean, you just, you, sh- you should do what you're ready to do when you want to do it. And mm. you, have, you, have, you know, you have an actual thought out reason and that is valid too. And, and like Ron, for all, all those reasons, that, that's valid. Yeah. But then, it, and I think like for you to evolve to where you wanted to talk about it, you waited till it was the right time right. and you talk about it in the right way that nobody feels sorry for you. The way yeah. you're talking. Oh, that's it's, it's, fuck, man. I never even thought about yeah, it. Yeah, you're, there's, you're not, you when you're up there, it's, it's, you're standing so strong in it that you, nobody, you're just funny with it. And, and 
But I, I see what you mean. You have to get really funny in it to get over the well, because sympathy it's like part. jokes like the Hearts and Minds one, where it's like, because that yeah. got a groan from everyone. Oh, it's like, terrible. <laughs> but, I mean, it's absolutely horrible. <laughs> it's it's like, hilarious. But, but, only you could do it. And that's the thing. And But that's why, like, I'll always, he was so funny because when you said last night, you know, like the sobriety and people punch line, right. it's like, you know, you be advised there's a, there could be, you could be setting yourself up for a disconnect between that and the audience. And I had never really thought about it because usually that joke, and I was telling you last night, right. there's a follow on joke that usually makes that much, much more sense. It's like, that's why I stay away from people. That's why I drink at home in my garage, hanging out with my dog, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of, so that didn't happen last night. And I was like, no, no, that makes totally, like, complete sense. But like, and even though, like, uh, there was another joke I tried last night that normally, uh, like, I, I do the, it's the notebook. It's like, yeah, my marriage is like oh, the yeah. notebook. Yeah, the notebook. that was funny. I said, it, it, normally I'm like, fuck, shit. <laughs> and Mike always like, stop screaming into the mic. And so like last night I was like, yeah, my marriage is like the notebook. And the notebook was called, God damn it. It, was, it was, yeah. That, I, and I think I'm going to roll with that from now yeah. on. No. So you, you might spend like months with a punchline just like, no, no, no. Yeah. You got to get like. How long, Vicky, would you stick with new material before you're like, mm, I tried it, nah, can it, doesn't, it? I'm not using it? I think if just a few times out, you know, definitely not less than two or three. Right. Because it's just the audience, your delivery. Is there something in it? If you really want to hang on to something, sometimes I'll write a joke and I'll put it on the shelf for 10 years. Yeah, I've yeah. just brought some jokes out that are really uh, lately. I've just been in silly joke mood. The yeah. sillier, the better. <laughs> like I'm like telling, you know, basically like fart jokes. I yeah. mean, I, it, they're not like that, but they are. I'm just silly. I'm into silly lately, and I used to be embarrassed about being silly. I go, oh, this is too silly. Now I'm not embarrassed of anything. Yeah. So the silly stuff that I thought was funny a long time ago, but I wasn't ready for. I'm bringing these jokes out that are that literally I wrote ten years ago that I wasn't ready to tell. That's. Really valid. Uh, I, I remember hearing a comic saying, like, don't ever, like, throw away your notebooks and yeah. stuff like that. Like, because when you're an open mic comic, you're writing down these premises that are pure. They're so pure right. and unique and significant to you. But you as a comic don't know how to tell them yet. You got to work for, like, two or three years. And once you're like, oh, shit, you go back to those notes like, ah, it's a really good premise. And now I totally understand the, the, the construction of how to tell this better. Right. And they can, you know, and it's just pure. I'm, I'm struggling specifically with a joke right now. The uh, man's man one, the ending. I'm trying to find a different ending. I, I was wondering though, um, last night when you're opening set, like, because you had Brandon Potter open the first and then you had oh, Ron second. open the second show, two completely different openers. How did that, um, how did that translate on the show? Like, does it, Change your, the you set at all? You made does that it, call, right? Like that was you. Does you didn't change? ask for no, anybody. I just, well, no, I, just I wanted, mean, but does it change anything? I've well, always been interested in that. Well, so like, usually, what's the effect? whichever manager is on. Uh, uh, they'll pick a comic and this is one of the things they do to us that I absolutely love is they don't right. tell you Last who's going to go and No no you. I don't I don't mean it but like it, that you I mean, mean like, you the mean the like actual, did it so so it did it actually it, no. Oh so like did Brandon cuz Brandon's a gay comic and he's right. like he comes out and he's just like what's up bitches what did it have it doesn't a different have, it, it it those two because both guys are really capable yeah. so it had no effect on my set the different two guys would would have a Really, at this point, too, I've been doing it so long, and I was not like bragging, but yeah, yeah. whatever happens, so no brag. Me, it's by like the, the next channel. I so, will. But, so as long as it's just a good set, it, it the, really yeah. doesn't you, you, matter you, what vein it, it's you, in. Yeah, and if it's a bad set, you just you just you Move just I don't. The, but yeah, but these Get guys, the fuck are, out of these here, guys are super capable, and then if the feature was great. So I mean, but on the road lately, I've been you know getting many people that I don't know, never met, and sometimes there'll be like. Some the, I've had an experience where I, a terrible opener went, ran the light, did like 15 minutes of internet jokes and oh, and dear. terrible crowd work. Oof. And then the feature was crowd work like, how opening long the they, show, huh? Just like, hey, why don't you go not, ahead and heckle like, for the rest of the fucking night? That. Yeah, no, and, no. And then and then the second guy was, you know, really uh, terrible, and uh, and then I it just made it you have to work a little harder. Um, but that that's well, know, I just, I pulled material because I mean like I won't. If I'm doing so, so, I've had people like I've pulled a gun joke because I know that the headliner like would end talking about right. guns, and That's I'm like, really cool, so nice. I don't want to stuff. And like yours, like I have this joke. It's a really original joke that I totally wrote about hanging out at uh, the correctional facility for conjugal visits. Right. I took that one out because right, right, I feel because like that little, visits, yeah, right. it's like a little bit on your. You know, I appreciate somebody that. might See? say I stole it, and I don't want to be put in that. Position. Well, no, it's also if you know the headliner's gonna got a strong thing. 
Well, it's really nice to back off. I mean, you know, I, I was not a headliner for till you know I was fifteen years without. Headliner. I was fifteen yeah. years. You not. were born a but, headliner, you know, Vicky Barber. But I, I tried to be 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 respectful. You know, now and then you could if somebody treats you really bad. Yeah. Or they they let you know that they don't you don't think they're if they they say you're you're beneath them really strongly. Sometimes <laughs> you can just squash yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> And as a feature, and then they have to eat crap because you ruined their night. How do you but like only, that, Dick? That, that's the, I've, I've done that so rarely, and only, but I have done it. I'm, yeah, I yeah. shouldn't have, but I no. I and uh, I mean, because I've heard stories about um, you know headliners taking only specific people out on the road with them, um, not just because they like hanging out with this, but because they want a very specific flavor or ambiance yeah. to when they go up or not allowing, like I was working at uh, the a at ACC for a little bit before and specific people not, they, them saying, no, we don't want anyone going up mm -hmm. because it's got to be. And then there's other comedians I would see and quite frankly, they were always my favorite. They were always the ones whose their performance <clears throat> just stood out and they'd be like, I don't care who you put up, just as long as it's not an open micer who's going to start like Talented. mimicking my voice by the time you know yeah. the weekend's over, or stealing my jokes. Just if you have a professional up there, as long as the even good or bad, just let them go. I'm going to run anyway. Yeah. I'm going to be right. good. That's, that's they came right. here to see me. It doesn't matter. You, I think you're, if you're really defensive about your work, that means you're defensive about your work. You don't yeah. want to be defensive about comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's I don't. If you can avoid it. I actually, I mean, like when I'm with other comics. Like I'm, I'm pretty open to it because you never know like where those three words that change a, a joke are gonna come from, you know. Mm. Like, it, so someone could come up to you and say like, "Oh, you know what a good tag for that is," and you just if you like it, you like it, and if you don't, you're like, again, you're like, you yeah. should put that on the fridge. I like yeah. that. Or like, like yeah, hey man, cute. open mic is every Thank Tuesday. Yeah, open mics are on that's Wednesday. That's clown, great, get the yeah. fuck out of here. But that's no, I mean, I'm never joke. rude to people because I don't. I, like I, I've spent enough time in my life, like with my primary goal is to, like hurting people. Like now, it's like comedy. It's like I don't. I've, I've hurt people for a living. Now right. I want to. I'd rather make yeah. people laugh. Yeah. And so I don't. I just don't like being mean. So I just. It, it's weird when you're at the stores and like I'm hosting mics and stuff, and they're just like just shit on them. If they're shitty, get them the fuck out of here. Um, like it's it, it thickens up their skin and stuff. I'm like. I just, it feels weird to yeah. me because, like, what if that person is like, he, they ate shit tonight, but, like, you know, they're taking it and they're just trying well, their the shit. Like, everyone deserves it. The audience I already told you, them. Man. The audience already told yeah. them they didn't do well. Exactly. They don't need to yeah. hear it from somebody that's else. That's such a great, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful way to I put that. I completely agree. I, and, and, I mean, there's enough people out there that are going to do that job anyway, so. But I try to I do, just like, I'll try to, like, if they did do terribly, like, I'll try to roast them a little bit and be like, you know, like, oh, if, next time fucking speak into the mic, you know, or right. something like that. Or, or just, like. But not like that you are shit, like, go to your car, kill yourself yeah. immediately, like, none of that. Maybe <laughs> just be like, wow, you never knew how long three minutes could actually be or something like <laughs> right. that, you It's know? only, like, I think, like, the really people that are really frustrated with their own comedy that come at other comics like that. Mm. And. And that's it's just, projection. Yeah. And you, and you see, I've, I've known a lot of women comics that have told me, you know, I started when I was 38. So nobody ever bugged me. I wasn't like, I wasn't somebody that they were going to hit on. I wasn't somebody that they could put down because I was like a mom walking around the comedy store at 38 years old. You started at 38. Yeah. That's... Really, uh, really like 41 in LA. Yeah, I so, started I mean, super late myself. Right, wow. Right. So like, yeah. not, none of the young guys, mean young guys were going to bug me. But I, I've heard from... My good friends that they were basically they just wanted to run these young women out. Yeah. These mean ones. And that they're not that many mean ones. But the ones that were mean were so mean. So they caused trauma and stuff. So it's like and and there's no reason for any of us to treat each other like that. We yeah. should treat each other with, you know, camaraderie. We, we should be supporting each other as comics there's no reason not I'm, to be I'm, I'm, and that's one of the reasons why like so like, I've been doing this show for like two years and when I met Cunningham I was, I was like shit man we got it we should work together and I'm for like I'm, I'm going to school I'm gonna graduate in May Yay. and I'm using the old GI Bill thanks government yeah. um, but I'm using those benefits and, and so I'm doing I'm majoring in uh, event and uh, right. meet, meeting and event management Genius. and so it's really it's all just you know, project management yep. and building teams. Yep. And so one of the big things they talk about is, is like coaching, mentoring. And it sucks because like comedy needs, there's, there should be more mentoring in the comedy yeah. community. Like there should, it, the more you try to like reach out and work with people, 
I've always thought of it's like, you know, it's like a mountain. You know, yeah. the mountain, Mount Everest has never been summited solo. It takes rope guys, right. climbers, yeah. medicine people, Sherpas. And it takes locals, too, that yeah, show you. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can do everything right. You can have the best team possible. You can be making the best uh, climb, uh, yeah. taking the best route. And then fucking weather can come yeah. in and kill half your team. Yeah. Like, it's not always, you know, like... It's not going to be your fault. So it's I, I you need a, people. Yeah, I had a writing group that I was involved with for like ten years. I am so interested in your story. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, that, that was so special that we'd meet every week, and it was a it's funny because it was a psychiatrist, a doctor, oh, a, a bank president, and a CPA, and me. And, and sometimes would, meeting day would be at my Some trailer. UPS driver, with all these, just for the, all these, the wild all these card. amazing Mercedes and Jaguars <laughs> would pull up to the front of my trailer, and we'd have our writing group. And there's still well, two of them are gone. They've we've lost them. Was that in the beginning? Or? It was my very beginning very for like beginning. the first ten years. We had a group together, and uh, and it was so great because, and then I've, I've had writing groups with girlfriend comics, but. I, I'm because I'm on the road. Opa. Oh, that's the most beautiful sound of Isn't a cracking that's... open can of beer that I've ever heard. <laughs> but so yeah, I'll it's no. yeah, I miss having a writing group, and I think everybody that wants to do stand up, w- whenever possible, get into a writing group because it forces <laughs> you to, to bring something together to the to. group. You had to prepare something, absolutely, even if it's in your I car at the agree. last minute. It's it's funny because I, I was agree more. At something that that actually came up when I, I was reading about uh, Chuck Palahniuk and also the woman who. So one of my favorites. She, um, I, I don't know if you guys remember the movie uh, where Reese Witherspoon played the drug addict that I went have on the seen Appalachian. Every single Reese Witherspoon movie. But you know movie. the one where she goes yes. on the Appalachian. Yeah, yeah the no, I missed that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was the, the one with the with the boots. The real um, author behind that. One of the, one of my favorite stories about a writing group comes from that. Is she talks about they took it out of the book. Her she she her her editor wouldn't let it go. Because it was such a filthy story that she put in. But it was essentially her writing about... Because she had just started getting into writing because as like therapy for all the trauma. And her writing about um, one point she had felt a bird die. Like she picked a b- bird up and a little baby bird and it was dying. And it's spasms in her hand were dying and uh, it reminded her of the same feeling that when her grandfather basically molested her and made her... Uh, masturbate him. She felt and like the way the, that the she explained that, that yeah. through mm-hmm. the writing group and everything. It was just like such. Uh, di- I was like, damn, like I gotta get with a yeah, writing group. I, I needed start a roadmap for that fucking connection. I know. I was yeah. just just yeah. hearing anytime no, 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 I like hear like, but like the bird it. and the yeah. Oh, I, I feel it. The flutter in the head yeah. and remembering that horrible old. As shriveled the, up grandfather. I've never Ooh. had a grandfather penis in my hand. You know, that's like, I, don't, I can't relate to you that. You know, I got a couple of phone numbers. Me neither. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you I, have some time this afternoon. I am <laughs> so interested in in your story. Like, what? So, how did you get into comedy? I want to know it's what books like, you read when you're traveling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, how did you get into comedy? It's because I I started did late as well. Like, what? Why did you? What made you start at 38? Yeah. What was ready. The, set. Go. Well, literally, I was in the bathroom one day, and I was married and unhappy, and I was living in the garage, kind of separated from my husband. I stayed, We stayed in the same house, but yeah. I, I made an apartment in the garage, and I was miserable selling carpet for my parents for 20 years. At least it was in the days before Yelp, when you could treat people like you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just really unhappy and, and thought, well, my children are happy, and they make me happy, and my brother's happy, and I'll just watch them live happy lives, and that's what I got. I didn't understand that you could change your life. I just thought your life was set. Yeah, yeah. And I was in the wrong line and had a crappy life for me. And uh, and one day I was in the bathroom and there was this ad sticking out of the, the, to- the, the bathroom and it had the Comedy Store logo on it and it said comedy classes. And I picked it out of the trash and it was it, it said Polly Shore's sister Sandy Shore teaching comedy. Yeah. And I, I called my cousin Dan, which is really weird because I had lots of money because I worked for my parents. And, but I Humble called my brag. cousin Dan. No, I mean, you know, I was just, fucking loaded. No, I didn't mean lots I'm of them. No, I just meant I wasn't a comic and I yeah, had a yeah. day job. That really was. <laughs> no, we, okay. so we anyway, can, everyone in this right. room can So I had $175 to take the class. But yeah, I yeah. thought to myself, I'm going to call my cousin Dan, who is this major investor. He's always successful. And I thought, I'll ask him to pay for this class and then maybe I'll be a successful comic because everything he touches turns to gold. So he said yes. And then for the next 20 years, I thought, maybe I'm the only investment that Dan <laughs> screwed up. <laughs> you know? and, but So then I took this class, and I walked in there with three big books, three fat books. 
I thought so that I didn't even know what they were. I just rat, set up punch. So, so that everyone would so, so everyone would think I was smart. Who does oh, that? Just <laughs> it was just books, just that, big just, books. And I sat them down with a thud. <laughs> smart girl. I was carrying in the room. them on my head though. Too. Seriously, like, like boss. Like a, what? And, and so, <laughs> so that's who I was when I started. And I didn't know myself. I didn't want to know myself. And the thing about stand up is you have to get to know yourself, even if you don't want to. Because you have to come to find out who you are so you can bring these jokes out, out of your yeah. truth. So, so anyway, that's, that's how I started. And then I just took the class and then the, I met these friends, those guys that are my friends. That, you know, we started the writing This group. was up in L.A., right? It was, this no, is, or it this was is in La Jolla. La Jolla store. Oh, yeah, and wow. then about four years, and I was terrible. I was what terrible. Year, what year was, I mean? I was 38 then, so it was like, so that would have been six. 2004? It would have been 23 years ago. Yeah. Wow. So if it was a and, day, yeah, yeah 23, 24 years ago. And when I first took that open mic, so then so that class and then I started, go, they, there were very few open mics. So we would just get a, a PA and a microphone and go to bars yeah, yeah. around PB, OB, and just would just start telling jokes and ruining people. Would you nights. even ask the bar? Or no. Would you just oh, show God, up? no. That's you assault. Never That's ask. assault. That's never a- ask. <laughs> Never ask. You, they will never say yes. <laughs> Could we please have no. a no? Get the they, fuck they, out of Who's this drag queen and this weirdo guy? <laughs> so no. So we we would just go in and, and ruin people's nights until they asked us to leave, which was pretty soon. And then we just go down to the we literally up and down Garnet Grand. We would do that night after night because we couldn't even get on any open mics. And then and then it, I I just worked really really hard and then. Uh, but Fred, the manager of the comedy store, who I had a mad crush on, he was the funniest comic that I have ever seen in my life. Like, What's his name? His name was Fred Burns. He had spinal bifida, and he was so funny that the Farrelly brothers, they saw him in L.A., and they loved him so much, they just put him in one of their movies. He just stands around the street and tells jokes while they film by. Was he, uh, is he still alive? No, or, he, uh, went, he lived quite a long time for a person with spinal bifida, yeah. so like 45. Uh. But... Uh, so he, he he thought I was terrible, and I was. And uh, <laughs> so he never put me up. So I'd bring baked goods every sa- Sunday night to the open mic, but I never uh-huh. got on. I, call, I made my daughter Emily call every week, pretending to be me. Hi, it's Vicky Barbalak. Did I get on tonight? <laughs> no, thank you. By no, the way, Mom. you sound different on I stage. I couldn't do it. I couldn't <laughs> ask. It just hurt too much. Do you have anyone that you used to run with back in the day, like uh, the crew that, that that you used to do that stuff with, that's oh still around God. doing comedy? Yeah, like, well, or... one of those guys is Tony Calabrese. And he's oh, wow. Yeah, Tony. In San Diego. Jim Billingsley does it rarely, but he should do it more because he's so funny. Yeah. But uh, Tom has passed away, and so has Howard, the psychiatrist. Mm. So, um... <clears throat> But I do, you know, but then when I went to L.A., I sort of, Mitzi saw me one night. She was in La Jolla, one of those Sundays. But Fred didn't know I'd been working, like, for four years. How much so longer hard. was it? This was, like, four, four years? About four years after I started. Wow. And also, when you start in the Sandy Shore comedy class, yeah, like Bobby Lee and stuff, everybody would make fun of us because we were taking a comedy class, you know? The, the, yeah. So you were, like, subhuman for that. They still, <laughs> Bobby Lee ripping on Vicky oh God, he was like <laughs> People still do that now. One time still... I, was, I was at the comedy store, and I heard... I was on the I was in the bathroom, and Bobby and a bunch of the comics were on those metal stairs on the way to the belly room, and I could hear him because I was peeing and the windows right there. Yeah. And Bobby Lee was going, "No, no, I saw her when she was the worst. I saw her." And they were all having an argument. Who saw me when I was the when worst? When you were the worst. Because Want me they to fill you up. Thanks. But they, it was a compliment because they thought I had gotten funny, but I. So Bobby Lee won. He goes, no, I saw her in this. Such a backhanded fucking compliment. Well, you know. Such a <laughs> but, comedian compliment. Exactly. They gave you. But anyway, so, I mean, but then Mitzi w- walked in and she goes, who is that at the bar? And, and somebody goes, Vicky Barbalek. And she said, put her on. And nobody knew I'd been working so hard and I'd gotten a little set together. And uh, sh- I had a good little five minutes and Mitzi called me over to the booth and waved me with her little finger. And she said, sit down. And I sat down. She goes, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, you're you're a, you're a regular. <laughs> now go away. <laughs> and she waved me away with the same finger. Beautiful. That's and, fucking hilarious. And I didn't know what a regular was, so I went out in the uh, the bar and I go, what's a what's a regular? 
and everyone's like, everybody's wants like, what to you, kill you, you idiot, like, you stupid you mother, you. F- and then, they, and then uh, I think it was Bobby Lee. He bitch. goes, oh, that means you get to go to L.A. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding? I went out in the hall, the yard, and screamed, started freaking I out, like out. you didn't even realize your dreams have just been. Yeah. And then the first time I drove to Hollywood, I I paid, <coughs> I paid for parking because I never paid for parking, and I always like walk a mile. But I'm like, I'm gonna celebrate, and, and I parked at the Hyatt for like ten dollars. Yeah. And then, and then I told, I again, freaking Bobby, I go, oh, you know, I'm celebrating. I bought a, I got a parking spot at the Hyatt. He goes, this is a comedian's parking lot. Thank you. <laughs> you are supposed to park in this parking lot. I go, what? <laughs> I could park in this parking lot? And then ever since, it's still to me, the biggest thrill to me is when I drive down Sunset, I'm thinking, I'm going on Sunset Boulevard. I'm going to the comedy store. I still think of myself as that housewife Going down <laughs> Sunset Boulevard, turning into the comedy store. I really get to park here. Every get time I park there, I here. still go, is this really happening? That's funny. Uh, the first time, uh, in question, did anyone care if I roast this bone? Does oh, no. Mind? I don't want to, no. you know, like you're a lady. No. I'm sure, no. Don't let it be said the boys on honorable discharge don't know how to treat a lady. That's right. Um, I'm very impressed. So it's what's funny is... Uh, I will is that not a foot be ro- massage that's happening? Like today? meeting, meeting I that I will not person. be roasting bones just so everybody... <laughs> oh, yeah, knows, like, yeah. Get out of here, active duty. <laughs> right um, but no, uh, the, I... I remember I tried to get you connected with Gladys Simon. I just wanted to put you guys in the same room. And, and she's from the Comedy Cellar. She, no, she's from the Comic Strip. The Comic Strip. And right. she's she's uh, she found Gaffigan and Galifianakis, and she's just you know New York City Jew broad looking for I will go. Comedy town. I, I got to go back to New York. Oh but, my god. So I I I somehow she hit me up. She called my godfather. Sent her an email and said my godson's in town. Uh, you'd like to you know to see your stage right. And so she called him back, called him, didn't email, fucking called him and was like, oh, yeah, let me, you know, tell you about it. You know, you bring, you, if you could bring two people, that'd be great. But you come down, you, you, you do two, uh, you do five minutes of material and uh, then, you know, I'll, I'll pull you aside and I'll, I'll give you some pointers and stuff. And I'm just like, who the fuck is this? You know, like, am I being, am I being joshed right now? Is somebody joshing me? And uh, she's like, you know, no, you can look me up online. So I like, start looking her up online. I'm like, oh, holy shit. Okay, cool. Wow. So I go down there and I'm talking to her. And I've never been. It's my first time in New York to do comedy. And the old godfather is just trying to get me to hit every club. Because he's never experienced comedy. And he's lived in New York City since the 70s. Wow. So now he's like, cool, I'm taking my godfather, my godson. How hard could these, it be? How hard these... could it be? <laughs> well, he just loved it because there were all yeah. these places that he'd never been in New York yeah. as long as he lived there. And um, so then we go and we, we sit down. And I do, I do five really shitty men. It's just, I mean, I don't even remember what I did, but I know it wasn't awesome. And I, I, even though I spent like, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to rehearse for this. And I'm walking around like Central Park, like with my headphones on, right. r- listening to my recorded set, trying to memorize it like yeah. like, a, like your favorite scene in a movie. Right. And yeah. So, and it just didn't work. And I, I just, I didn't do well. So I get off stage and she's tiny. She's fucking tiny. And it's, it's like Mitzi. Like Mitzi. You know, and, 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 and she, she, all right, come over. And so we're in this dark alley, a corner of the, of the, co- of the club and, and I was like so yeah what anything and she's like get a haircut work on everything <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like what this would say <laughs> and exactly so I was just like oh, I, love that. I was like so any okay I get a haircut I can do that uh, any uh, just anything stand out anything should go to the fucking floor like get rid of it like any anything should get a haircut work on everything <laughs> and then come back and oh, nice. so i literally i went out the next day got a haircut sent her a picture i'm like all right i'm already working on it and so now i'll right. send i'll send her videos uh, right. and stuff and just like run jokes and stuff by her and she's actually been really really good about mentoring and That's it sucks wonderful. it sucks that I've got to go to you know like outsource to New York you know well, <laughs> sometimes if you got well, somebody like that listening I, to you but and that's the I've thing too is mentoring and, and is, is, yeah. is so important we talk about that specifically about San Diego a lot that um there's a million people trying to be comedians but there's so many other aspects of the comedy industry and business and scene or whatever you want to call it that it's not just kind of, and and there's so many people that could fit in and help this whole thing become so much better for everyone involved if they would just find a you know mentor or manage or like things that you could do alongside going on stage it's not just always boxing everybody out so that you can get the ball the most and so i i was wondering i i got to did you at any point did you take like a break were you ever like 
not doing comedy anymore, and you just this. took off for five years, or, so, no. or is that going so back you were to just, the carpet store? Was there any time? I mean, I know there had to be the existential questionings, the the right. internal stuff, but I mean, was there ever a point where you just gave up and stopped, and then had to come back, or were mm. you just going? No, I couldn't. I thought about it. It's like. But I thought I couldn't do it. Were you hard the whole time? Was it like you were going as hard as you can the whole time? Or were there <laughs> moments that you I was, were lighter? I'm always, I'm always yeah. hard. I'm so, you're so I hard right hard, now. I am hard. But I mean, were you were you a hundred percent focused, serious as you or was it twenty like twenty three years of a toe in the water, one mic a week for a little bit for a few years? Just or was say, it just say when'd you when'd you go all in? Yeah. So were you had, all when, in the whole time? So, so when'd you go balls deep in that hardness? <laughs> you know, when were, mean, you, were you hard? I mean when? like oh always 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 I did it. Always I did it every week. There's only been like two times in the last twenty three years where two weeks would go by and I didn't do stand up. I mean, there was a, a time when Maybe about five years ago, when I was paying for my daughter's wedding, and I was starting to sell a carpet again, uh, and uh, and and luckily, how long ago was that? I'm sorry. about five five years? Ago. The fifth yep. anniversary coming up, okay. so about five four. So I started about eight months before she got married, selling yeah. carpet again, and uh, and then I thought, you know, maybe it's just maybe uh, it's not going to happen for me, and uh, and then I, and then but I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't do it, and then. And then something came along, the show called The Funniest Housewives of Orange County. Yeah, yeah. And it was a real successful run. There's uh, uh, there like six, seven hundred women come to the shows. Yep. And that was building me a big audience again. And I was thinking... From that? Why was the... Uh... Because there was such a volume of people that were coming out to those shows. So I was getting so many fans from that. Oh. So I was able to fill some oh, rooms it went, and it So you're talking about a showcase that you were it on was at a, the... Yeah, it's called... My friend Cindy Burns started... She passed away... It was about 10 years ago, I think, she started it. So at that, the store? It, it, nope. She started in Orange County, mostly mm-hmm. at the, the coach house and different... Okay, uh, yeah. All the Orange County improvs and stuff. So so that came along, and that really buoyed me up for like just the pleasure of it. But I, but I really started thinking maybe it was going to end. Yeah, My, yeah. I wasn't going to keep the run going because I thought if I... I always thought you had to get on television to get to keep doing stand-up at some yeah. point. And... and, and uh, and I just, uh, things were close, and then they, they'd be pulled out from under me. And so I just thought it, maybe I just wasn't going to make it. And yeah, then, you were doubting yourself. You were yeah. really... And, and, you know, and I knew I started late. I knew it, And people yeah. in L.A. would say right to your face, industry. No, you're too fat, you're too old, you're too ugly. And I was like, you're probably right. And it's so hard when you start late because there's the, you always have that demon in the back of your head. Yeah. But everybody loves, especially if you if you start producing some good content. That's when everyone loves to bring up the fact that like, yeah, if you're 15 years past your expiration date, and it's like, I I, I know exactly what you're so talking you, you, about. You know, and yeah. that and that is LA. They don't they're they're fearful. Most of the people in the industry, and so I had to battle that. But then I also had to battle myself because. You know, I think also if I would have started younger, I, I probably I was so immature, like the girl the girl that it's, shows up with the yeah. books, and that, and so I. I think uh, it all in my career just worked out just like it uh-huh. was supposed to because you if you keep pure to your dream like you just keep doing what you love and like Steve Martin said you get so good um, they can't ignore you and then I also yes. thought well maybe Steve Martin was wrong about that yeah, yeah. Uh, but but it's just it is and like for me the the key was just come keep plodding on something will happen something door will open when did that moment when did you when could you say like you could put your finger on the moment where you actually were like all right this is I'm doing this. This is it's well, paying I mean, I, off. This I, is it. I, I felt like it was. I felt was like it America may, got talent? Maybe like when I got Funniest Mom in America, that was like fifty thousand dollars. And that, when was that? That was about eight years ago. And what happened with that? Was, Holy shit! You're a mom. Yeah. Ugh. Those are those are the children that follow me around. <laughs> so so the so what happened after that? Then I, then I was able to start doing corporate and fundraisers. So how'd you get that? Uh, what was that contest and how that? It was shake on Nick out? at Night, and Roseanne was the host, and I thought Roseanne. I, uh, she left the comedy store before I started and I was yeah. just afraid she would think I was a hack or something yeah, yeah. but she got right away that we were different she mm. was really good to me so um, so she was the host and then I started writing for her and uh, for the show or for just her, her jokes stand yeah. up yeah. and then uh, anyway so she was great to me and and then and then I was able to live by making fundraisers for like organizations because yep. I had this clean title Yeah. so that kept me going for a long time and then but then I, I didn't really know how to parlay that into, you know, big. Something, I couldn't, yeah. 
but I just didn't get it. And uh, then America's Got Talent happened. And then, you know, after, you know, like audiences always thought I was funny, but industry was resistant. So what happened with America's Got Talent is it shows you to like 14, 15 million people. They got behind me. Not all the 14 million, but enough got like behind me. And like and Yeah, like 19 people. They got behind me. And then the industry got behind me because the people pulled the industry to me. And yeah. then also it's a kind of a good time to be a 61-year-old person, woman doing comedy. It's just, Hell yeah. for, it's like, this is a good time to be where I am. And yeah. and so I, I am so grateful. And I'm like, you know, it's all the things that I hoped for happened. And I, I never did, didn't know if they were going to happen. And it, I was still happy. It seems like some of the stuff kind of happens a little quicker nowadays than the than yeah, the, did it because just, of the tools, the social media. Because you, stuff you like I mean, that. you've been you've been grinding for 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 like two weeks, and then like these past couple days, you know, uh, have been pretty like I mean, you just blew up. It, has that just been like wow, like holy shit? It's good. we're moving a million miles an hour now. Yeah, it's exactly like that. It's a and bullet train. So all so the. There's just so many opportunities, and the, and I and I'm so happy, and I I try not to think too far advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be like in this moment. Today is today. I'm at the comedy store. Tonight, oh, I love that. And that is what I get to do. I get to do two shows tonight, and that is so important. And and to think sometimes I think like oh, oh well I'll be really successful when I get a television show. Then if yeah. you get a television show, then you'll all only be successful if I get an Emmy. So you have to say what's the point? You you are successful today. Yeah. Enjoy this what you are doing right now. As just stay in this creative moment, and then things grow even bigger. I think. <laughs> what do you have outside of comedy? What's like your big thing outside of comedy? She other than people. Just, other she than, got that yeah, yeah, slutty I, wedding business. I got my slutty wedding business. It's my twenty nine ninety five half hour honeymoon. <laughs> is that your big? Is that like that's your, a fucking real? That's not I know, a bit. No, that's, I love it. I, know, I love really it. What is that love your, it. That's your big hobby. I that's love it. I love it. And uh, I was just getting that up business there with off car the ground. Washes on yeah, that's my. That's the, you know now it's you know it's, it's almost the ball November. <laughs> so we have to wait again for spring for those car washes to start again. But the um, the I think that my I I haven't been able to marry people since America's Got Talent tour. Because really? I've only married two different people. Why? Because what? it's too expensive to hire me anymore. Because I have to give yeah. up a weekend. Yeah, you're a big grab. What does it cost to get Vicky to do a Yeah, what's wedding Vicky's wedding yeah. price? It the... depends. But, you know, it used to be like... I used Not to do... for a comedian, obviously. If I There's wanted a non-binary, put... religious neutral... Seriously. Like, you want to have me on a Saturday? <laughs> green yeah, yeah. wedding if on I a have Saturday, to give up... on Valentine's Day If I have Day to give a Central Saturday Park. wedding, it's like at least 10000 no so shit. someone have, would have to cut, yeah, 10 grand and to so get that's you. my only two. So the only way it works for people yeah. is if they can work it out. That's what I'm going to be trying to do now. I, we're trying to have a partner in the business. So we're trying to get, like when I'm in Las Vegas, we're go, we hooked up with a wedding chapel. Oh, that makes sense. And we're yeah. going to be say, if you want to come to Vegas, I'll marry you that day. I'm already there. So it's not going to, it's going to cost like 1500 Perfect. So, I mean, so if I'm already at a place... I can marry you for a reasonable. And I love that we... you're like it's all love is negotiable. How do we yeah. as is my rate? <laughs> and how does someone book you for a ten thousand so, dollar wedding? So gig? you just go to like Vicky Barbalack dot Vicky Barbalack comedy. We also have Vicky Barbalack weddings. Yeah, yeah. So, so Vicky we Barbalack weddings. Com- but the comedy website now folds into the wedding website. It's yeah. all in one place. So so yeah, and and I'm really excited. I got this bitchin' place in Las Vegas. Yeah, super cool. What's and the name of it? What's it's the... called Rain? I thought it was a Pitch gay that place, shit. Rainbow Gardens, but it's not. Uh, I thought it was just for gays, but it's for everybody. It's been there like 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's Trump's America. It's beautiful, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, what? Um, and speaking of weddings, I mean. Lou, that's your. How many times you been married, by the way? I've been married three. Three. Three times. You I'm on my second card. myself. Right on. Don't you know? Keep, you know. Sometimes it just you don't know. This could be your last one. You never yeah. know. No, it I is. Never, it's I, my, see, she's gonna kill me if it's not. I like, got it's, you. It'll be mine. I got you. I never thought Lou would be the last one. I thought he would be long gone, man. So Lou, like, can you explain how did that? How long you, you guys explain, been married? But like, can you, you have something to answer? No, no, explain not like answers. Like, give us the no. Give us the story. So the first time I was I was at the comedy. Like store. The nicest and yeah, I love Lou. I was at the comedy store. I was like, you know, I I was like, you know, being very new, and he was on the porch, and uh, he, I said hello. Yeah. And he goes, I'm married. I'm like, <laughs> nice. oh my god, I'm gonna jump off the Coronado Bridge. <laughs> said the same I'm thing so to dis- me. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, what are you talking? Like, I he was like back then he was like such a schlub too. Uh, I was like, oh. <laughs> 
I'm back like, then. Yeah. No, oh, I got, I, I've got to put a picture of Lou. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. I mean, I think he's gotten really attractive as he's gotten older, like so many men do, unfortunately for us women. But so uh, is the thing. So my friend Georgia Jean, who's my friend now, she was a comic when I started from Australia. And she's a psychic now because she was so psychic then. <laughs> but she said to me, she goes, uh, Lou really likes you. And we, Lou and I were like friends for a couple of years. I go, listen. If if I ever date Lou, just shoot me. Get a gun and shoot me. Put me <laughs> down. And uh, so Lou always goes, "It's a good thing uh, uh, she wasn't a good shot." But yeah, so so we got married at the comedy store on a Monday night with a two drink minimum. And how uh, long you guys been married? It's fifteen years this April. Fuck and yeah! How long were you guys? Oh, congratulations, yeah, congratulations for fifteen years! years. Yeah. 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 All right, all right, all right. And fifteen horrible years. How long were you guys like dating before? So that we like month? we were like friends for like courting. Se- we were friends for like four or five years, and then and then we started uh, you know dating. I guess he moved out. I didn't. I never ever liked him that way. And then one day I heard he moved out from his wife. And yeah, I was just saying what happened in the original. Somebody said oh, married. He, his brother told me he goes, you know, Lou moved out. Sniffing. And then all of a sudden, my lady parts had a tingle. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh no, oh god, is that for Lou? Stop it! No, it can't be. <laughs> and you guys, it's like it's a wedding my, package. My too. He does the music. You do the fishing. It. It's like, he, you guys are such a great like formula. Great, he's, you like, know, it's. it's uh, <laughs> he's he's like you know I you know I think we don't keep a weapon in our house because it, but, I would I would kill him. Over anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but you know he is the he is a great guy for me and I'm really especially I've come to know this this time has been wonderful since AGT but it's yeah. also like really um it's a it's a it's a move in time yeah and I love the way he he supports me like he he he, he really does put the work first puts our relation like he gives up a lot of stuff just to be good to me yeah so i'm grateful for him i mean he's you know stoned out of his mind all the time he doesn't know it. what's going on or how to how to he's always smiling anything. and he's always happy he's and always... he's has he ever been doing like comedy stay or was he always the music just a man? piano player and he's, he's a great musician yeah oh, i'm glad that you're musician. bringing this up because i'm it, it, it's the perfect segue um so i was hanging out with uh lou on thursday in his office and that's when uh <laughs> And that's when I, I was like, oh, my God, it, like, I'd love to, is, are you guys here for a long time? Like, did, would she have time? Like, cause you're only here for three fucking days. You're just doing a quick turnaround. You're going to, you can see Vicky Barbalak in Las Vegas uh, at, at Jimmy Kimmel's. Every Tuesday. Yeah. Every Tuesday. Trailer Park Tuesday. It's so much fun. Uh, but, um, so I was so happy. I was like, hey, Lou, you know, do you think she would do it? Like, I, cause I didn't know, like, you know, maybe we, you have only three days. Maybe you want to go and do some stuff with your family. Uh, SeaWorld, so I don't want to like, uh, yeah, fuck SeaWorld. <laughs> Um, but so Lou, uh, Lou was like, oh, uh, he's like, yeah, you know, you should hit her up. And so I'm so glad that you did it. And then later on in the conversation, Lou and I got to talking about how you like to take grandkids down to Legoland. And so, you know me, I fucking Mm. love Legos. I got all these Lego jokes. Yes. So last night after, after your set, I came home, I got very drunk. Nice. (laughs) Yes. And then I went through all of my Legos. Uh Uh-oh. Don't I tell me. Here it is. I hope it is what I hope it is. Oh, no. it absolutely is. It absolutely is. Close is it your a eyes. Trailer? Is it a Lego trailer? Uh, close no, your eyes. but keep them closed. A little keep bit like, more keep personal. Keep them closed. Is it a Lego vibrator? I mean, you yes. are you're Did super. You, make me a Lego vibrator? Listen, you are super rich now, and beca- and you fucking I'm deserve it, rich. and you're so popular, so and you rich. so you can buy the Lego trailer yourself. But yes, what I you can. cannot buy, this is one in a million. Open your eyes. That's Vicky Barbalak. Oh, 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 oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh, there's Oh, more. she's so pretty. Oh, look at her green leopard dress. I this, love it. I hand painted that. It. Ron, it's so beautiful. You, you know, look, I almost bought you know a green leopard shirt look, at Goodwill today. If you look super, super close, and this is my detail from me to you, because I got love and I got respect. Look, check this out right here. It's got a gap tooth. Yeah, it's oh, just, just a little got, tiny, tiny. No, um, my, um, <laughs> my glass, my glasses. spectacles, my yeah. seeing, spectacles. my seeing machines, <laughs> my seeing machines. My glasses. It's got a little so Mickey bar. While you're life. getting your glasses, the idea was that you know, like now, so you know, if your kids, your grandkids love Legoland, now you can go and build stuff with your grandkids, and now you you got like the you little. Know, Ron, I'm gonna put this little, in a glass box and never ever. No, take you're it not. You're gonna fuck. Play I'm with never it. gonna take it. Oh my god, I love her teeth gap. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, it's fabulous. Oh. He was oh. wondering if you were gonna see that. Oh my god. <laughs> that is hysterical. Because I have, I got one too, man. You, you, oh me, god. Letterman, famous you know, gaps. I was getting my headshots done, <laughs> and this guy got up in a tree. He looks like long. <laughs> yeah, he's got the long hair like the, the Yami or whatever the guy that sells the butter, whatever that guy's name is. So he's up in the tree and he's taking my picture and he's looking at it, he goes, oh. I love your gap. It's so sexy. <laughs> he goes, did you have it done? Like, I go, oh, yeah, I had it done. It? I went and then I had my thighs enhanced and then I had some <laughs> facial hair extensions put yeah, I've been putting in. nickels yeah. in between these yeah. fucking things for 30 cool years. Like, and I like the teeth, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. All right. Well, look. Oh, it, thank you, Ron. Oh, no. Oh, it gets there's, better. There's more. It gets better. Be more. That's, oh, yeah. there so be that's more. performance, Vicky. Wait, so like to illustrate, like I love making, like it's the comedy store. This is mine. You're not keeping this. That's beautiful. But that's the comedy store oh, right down to Lou's office. Co- no, I get that in the will when he dies. Right yes. down to the, the stained glass. Oh my God, that's beautiful. So here's the store, but so. Uh, you look beca- great. Thank you so no, much. No, I know. It may be But beautiful it's so Lego you can guy. do stuff like that. But uh, no, no. Here it is. Vicky would Drum be, roll. Vicky wouldn't. That's working, Vicky. This. Go ahead and open up. This is oh. vacation, Vicky. Oh. Oh. With oh. alternate hairstyles. Oh so, I you know, you it. can change your hairstyle, but I love it. it wouldn't be good without Vacation Lou. Oh, God, I love it. And That's so fun. With his 1980s cell phone to manage all of your calls. You know, I wear, I, I have a gigantic I know. glam wig. I know. I remember from the party. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep, yep. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. And I then, can't believe it. And it's also, beautiful. no com- comedy Vicky would be great without her trophy husband, Lou. Ah. <laughs> Check out his abs. <laughs> Check out Lou's abs. Look at that. So I got really drunk and I was like, oh my God, I'm making all these many figures. So now my thing to do, my favorite thing you to do is. You are an incredible painter. Thank you. I'm, I'm, little herb, I'm very talented. I, I love everything. My, I love my big sippy cup. Which could have wine in it. It could have coffee. Who knows? Who knows you're Vicky Barbalac. There. You're I think on vacation. It's some very nice beer from San Marcos. Oh, from yeah. Dos Desperados Dos Brewery. Dos Desperados Brewery. That's what I want to be drinking. That's isn't what I'm that, talking about. Isn't I love that a nice, scrumptious. I like lesson. a beer when I'm floating in a pool. Isn't that and and oh, so and I literally like I had all these parts uh, like like Lou's Lou's outfit is the pretty, way he wears. He's things. Robin. From oh, the Batman and Robin kits, I actually had to cross out the little R on his shorts. But it's <laughs> yeah, that's that's all Lou. And, and so now you've got you and Lou. You can take him on vacation. My favorite thing to do is I like to travel around the world, and I'll put like my little minifigure yeah. in front of the Eiffel Tower and do it. And do it, and it's okay. And you, I, that I'm way you never have about, to look good in photos. I'm worried about taking them away and being with know, me, but I will do it. You can put them in the back Thank so you, you can't lose that microphone. I'm going to do stuff. Make, I'm going to have to make a, some kind of travel case so that I can. <laughs> Isn't he the most thoughtful person? But now, like, like, like I, I said, so now so they actually those. do make the Lego trailer so you can get that and yep. now you've got your custom minifigures that you can put outside. I'm thrilled. Thank you very much. I was blown I'm, away I'm honored when I and loving, loving, loving. Thank you so much for enjoying them. I, oh, my God. Thank it makes you. me yep. so happy to see you enjoy them. Oh, that's the best thing I've ever I'm a, gotten. I'm a big fucking kid. I love that. <laughs> but I've just got a giant penis. Uh, isn't that uh, lucky? Right? You know, lucky? sometimes you fucking win. Thanks, You've Mom. You've got a giant penis for a child. <laughs> right? It's, I have a giant <laughs> boy penis. <laughs> you should text... Um, his she penis? Should, she should come in and get another glass of Vuba. Sin? Yeah, let's that get sin her. Sin in here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't wanna, like, I can't, I can't, I can't not. I'll just yeah. go bring it in. Yeah. You want to just go? Yeah, I'll just go bring it Just bring my wife yeah, some yeah. champagne. Because you don't want to not have some more Vuba. I'll be right there. It was Thank so you. sweet. She was uh, She was like, do you guys like need anything? I was like, I'm running really behind. Can you go? Like, I, I need to run to the store. She's like, do you need a cheese plate? Jen oh. and I will go get you a oh, cheese so plate. Sweet. <laughs> Ah, they she's, love she's you. Wonderful. My wife loves you. Like, she made me this. She made me a, a leather crown, which it I was love. really it's so yeah, beautiful it's my out of thing. animal prints. My favorite thing. Oh, it's, it's probably not, but you're now, very. Now my second favorite thing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is really cool. It, it's well, we're crafty people. I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it on Halloween weekend. That's all I'm going to have. You know what we're doing for Halloween? What my wife and I are doing? Uh, she's been wanting to do Top Gun for years, <gasps> and I was always like, "Ah, hey, fuck this." And we have a history because when we first started dating. Uh, one of our first dates, I actually blew her off. Uh, we were—I was—it oh. was my birthday, and I got drunk, and we were, she—we were supposed to watch Top Gun on the aircraft carrier Midway. Oh, how They had fun. a big screening, and some oh, of the, the original, like the actual Maverick, no. was there. And I'd known her for like a week, so I just didn't know how, like, like how into Top Gun she is. But you know, she's from San Diego. She's right. like, that's fucking San Diego film, like. 
And so I fucked up. I seriously fucked up. So she we, she did Anchorman for me one year. Oh. So she dressed up at like Veronica Corningstone. Oh my God. She Burgundy. would look good as that. Yeah. And, and we crushed it. And so like now it's her year. So this year I'm doing Top Gun. And, uh, but at the store, because there's a mic uh, night before Halloween, uh, I'm going to come in with the outfit, but like Daisy Dukes. And nice. I'm, like, I'm going to be bottom say. gun. Right on. Right on. And just do like Tom Cruise. Yeah. All night. Great comedy. Get into it. Full throttle. Yeah. How funny. But the thing is, I'm just too tall. So. Oh, that's so, oh, that's so great. I mean, I'm Tom, I'm Tom Cruise's stunt stupid. double bottom gun. Ne- not this Chris, not this Halloween, but next Halloween, on Halloween, I'm going to marry these two friends of mine. These guys are getting married. Because they and paid X amount of no, dollars no, to book I, you that no, far. They're, they're, uh, 15000 one, one, one of them's an artist, and he's always to help me. So no, it'll be a gift. But I'm going to be, um, it's my, my dream. And Lou finally said, because of this situation, he said, yes, I've always wanted to be Marie Antoinette and have Lou be my oh, piss boy. Get the fuck get out of here. He got to go wow. under with the piss oh, thing. And he, that's was, awesome. he was so worried that I would really pee. I'm like, not going to not pee, really Lou. Pee. No, I am it'll not. It'll be like a bladder and it'll I'm be gonna Chardonnay. I'm going to have like a thing and I'm going to make him, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's going to have to empty some yellow stuff, but it's never going to be real pee. Yeah. I mean, so, no. I mean, maybe yeah. just do it once just to fuck oh, him up. Oh, probably will. Him, like, Definitely let him know who's in charge. Let him know who's really in charge. But I'm not telling him. <laughs> don't know. Yeah, no, no, you can't tell him. Your what? Your wife, by the way, she's not in there. The front door's. Out. I don't know. So I'll go back in. Is the front door wide open? Yeah, yeah. I think she's out doing something somewhere. So I'll go. Well, back hopefully, in we're not in the middle of a home invasion. No, no, no. Here no, at beautiful no. Studio Three Ninety Five in San Diego, California. But uh, don't, no, that's cool. Thank so you. I, uh, I have a question, if you don't mind me asking. How the what? What was the America's Got Talent? How'd that shake out? What did that? What was how the did thing that, that like? Shake out? How did you get like? I, Simon I just, Cowell fell happened? in love. Like, what so there, there was this outside producer, and I had done this show with uh, my friend Sean Pulaski and this other outside producer, Sharon. Love Sean. And, Sh- and it was a really stupid show. We used to call it Hagfest. And Sharon, <laughs> Sharon. Holy shit! That's awesome! <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. Did you hear about, I'm sorry, did no. you hear about Ladies of Laughter at the store? No. Which is, I mean, I'll probably have to edit this out, yeah, okay. um, but it's, I won't say anything terrible. Right. But So we, we have a show this weekend, uh, or next week, called Ladies of Laughter, just lady comics. Yeah. Uh, somebody called up and was like, yo, that's my show. It's trademarked. And like looked up and we're like, oh, shit. Nope. Yep. That's wow. okay. Okay. So we've been trying to come up with uh, new, new names. names. And like, I think they, they're resting on witty women. Um, I like hilariolas, but that's a, a. Oh, that's really funny. But that's, that's, from, really Amer- that's from American Dad. Okay. That's not okay. mine. Uh, but I was like, could we? Uh, no. But um, so we, I think we're settling on like witty women or some, or her, her hilarious. Yeah, which I don't really care for, but you guys can Hag use Hagfest. Hagfest. Hagfest is fucking. You tell can use Mike it, we're not that. Using it. Okay. Tell Mike that. But so, so Sharon said, you know, it's just not my kind of show, and and I was like, okay, and and so so she left, and I didn't really no hard feelings, but yeah. I, eight years later, I get a call from her. Hey, it's Sharon. I'm producing for America's Got Talent. You want to come audition? I'm like, oh, no. Wow. <laughs> Are you crazy? That's fucking awesome. I'm like, they're not going to take me on that show. Are you insane? And she goes, no, no, they they like you. They're British. I showed them your stuff. I go, no, they're not going to like me. She goes, you got to come audition. I go, Sharon, no. She called me for two weeks. And finally, I go, okay. So then I, I sat outside this airplane hangar, and I wrote down a list of all the reasons why I should get on and all the people that ever helped me in my life. And then I walked in there, and they said to do two and a half minutes. And I, I was one producer the executive producer, his assistant, and a sound camera person. So I do the set, and they go, well, um, do you have any more? Is that it? Hmm. I go, well, I, I planned two minutes, but you're like the shittiest audience I've ever had. I put laughter in there. <laughs> Just balls and out. And then they started laughing. And, um, <laughs> and, and so then I got on the show, and... Uh, and, and, and was I, it that like one liner that kind of like hooked them, or did you actually I, do like like eight more minutes? Cause no, no, I'm I'm suspecting that they they went online and looked at my stuff. I think they already oh, okay. knew you were gonna. So so um so then uh then it started, and that first night, Mitzi had had her funeral mm. on Mother's Day. Yeah. And just about six. Yeah. Three, maybe two weeks later was I'm standing on this brick wall at the Pasadena Civic Auditorium backstage, about to go my first live performance in front of the the judges and like 4,000 people. And uh, and then I I just felt like Mitzi, maybe my mom too. I just felt, I never ever felt the presence of, you know, spirits or anything yeah. like that. I'm not Spectres. like that. And I just felt like Mitzi was like looking over me or something. And then I went out there and, and did it. And then it, it went so well. And my daughter's right beforehand told me, mom, 
they told me that they did, they agonized on whether or not they should tell me this, but they're backstage with me and they go, Mom, you're probably going to get buzzed by Simon. You remember, Mom, got to keep going up to three buzzers. Don't stop. Because they thought I oh, didn't yeah, know Oh, yeah, don't get fucked up on a buzzer. Yeah, they, yeah. they just had it. They were worried about me. And I go, okay. I've been heckled so fucking yeah. much, dog. I'm yeah. good. I got so this. They're there. Yeah. 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 No, thanks. So then it went great. And, and, and I was so happy. And, uh, and, and then the very last night was the to get into the final cut, mm-hmm. the last judge cut. They put me up last. And then I knew how many openings there were. I forgot how many now, but there was maybe, say, eight. And I was the last to go. And uh, in, I think intentionally, you know, or not intentionally, but they told this little girl I was hanging out with all the time that and she didn't make it through. And she came up. She goes, and Vicky, there's only two more spots. And then sure enough, one person made it through and another. And then I knew I didn't get on finals. Mm-hmm. And I had a little napkin. And it, uh, that napkin was like only the size of a, a pea. I cried into it so much. And I had nowhere oh, else wow. to put my tears. And I thought, once again, Hollywood told me they liked me. And at the last minute, they would pull their, yep. pull that out, just like it happened to me my whole life in that town. Yeah. I was like, damn it, they got me again. Son and then, of a bitch. And, I, and, they, and I couldn't move. The th- stage director had to push me. Bitch. He goes, can you move? I go, no. He had to push me onto the stage. I literally was frozen. I was just so... Because that does not come off so well, when you watch it. Well, if you very watch like, the very last one, I'm standing there crying like a nut before they called me uh, through. Was, so uh, you knew that you weren't on, when you went I didn't out. Make you knew it. it was a... And so Howie said, the way he put it, he goes, you know, Vicky, you're used to disappointment. And he looked at my ah, I remember that, yeah. And yeah. he goes, and he goes um, you know, but you know, you've made it through disappointment before. Yeah, yeah. And I looked at their, their beautiful this. faces. I wanted to see their faces one more time. Uh, and then he goes, you made it through. And like, I'm still that. crying, that like, thinking about it again because... That's what I knew would be changed my life if I made it to the finals, and it did. So what, I mean, what were some of the challenges of doing comedy in, in like, a in, you know, it's like, What's welcome f- to the oct- octagon against Whoa. a bunch oh, it's, of it's really hard break to do. dancing. Yeah. And in the beginning, I was really resentful, like, what, this yeah, isn't comedy, this that, isn't art. And that's then, where and I would have been, After a while, though, you get into the zen of that two minutes, like p- painting that little Lego you gave mm-hmm. me. Yeah. It's like that kind of zen, tiny work where you have to look at every joke and every word. And I'd gotten to a point in my life where, I think in stand-up, you want to get to a point where you're not relying on material. You're just going out you there and being, out, boom, boom, that's where you want to get to, uh, which yeah. also is... Great, but it's also a good idea to write some material now and then. Yeah, yeah. So I think I was also getting kind of lazy, and um, this and this just this discipline of the word, those words, it it was very good for me. It disciplined me and, and reinvigorated my work yeah. in general now. Wow. So, and and so it was all good. It was all yeah. good. There's no mean, down. Did it's it, crazy. I'm sorry, uh-huh. but it's it's crazy. Like while you're out there. And, and you're just scooting, and, you know, like I'd just be working shows at the store and, and you know, hanging out in Lou's office. And, and Lou would just be like, ah, oh, you know, what's going on? You know, because he's Lou. Yeah. Um, but he would just tell you, uh, just be like, yeah, you know, like we're driving up there and she's just, you know, like on the way up. Should I do it again? Should I do it again? Yeah, run it again, honey. Run it again. And just running the bit in the car. I was going driving every, to the studio. I went, you know, I did that two minute sets for two months at a time, a hundred times in clubs. Jesus. And, and then and at the just... last minute, they would change it. <clears throat> they, they would change it at the last day. Well, we, we got a problem here. We can't say this word. Okay. How? And then you would sh- completely screw up your last hit. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But it, you went through it. How, you made it how did that change things for but you so, with... with uh, it seemed like it probably was a game changer. The whole world is different now for you yeah. because of well, America's Got Talent. Yeah. Like, Jimmy Kimmel the, the, the and Jesse Egan. The, so. <laughs> yeah, the, reach, the reach of that show is yeah. Shout out to Jesse worldwide. Egan. I mean, like, it's just bizarre how many people see you. And they, what they, when they show you the people on the show, like they took people into my trailer. They, they, my, they met yeah, my family, my home. neighbors. They, yeah. they, so when I meet people, like they feel they know me, and they really do because there wasn't anything that wasn't real about. Yeah, they grind you down. They interview you so long you can't even and pretend to be anybody else. Do you else. ever? And, and so when I was working for you last night, like your impact with people, like it's incredible to watch. Uh, people just want like in in people want to be part of. What it, you know, they want that trailer nasty. But and, and from a, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. I when I was taking pictures for you last night, I was like your security. Thank you for and, doing that. Oh, hey man, don't touch my fucking Vicky Bar <laughs> Black. Don't fucking touch. But it's crazy because people do. They come up and they they you know they start touching your. I saw a woman like just touch your. But uh, mm-hmm. she fixed like your dress, and then another woman came up and like brushed her your hair. You yeah. were talking to somebody. I I'm sure you were aware of it. Someone's touching you, but you didn't. 
you didn't flinch or anything. No, I'm so but I people like people want to touch you. And people want to come really up fun. to you. People yeah. want to, and, and it's weird from a security standpoint. I'm. I thought it was interesting to be like, yo, you have to be the asshole. Like, be like, all right, guys, move along. You know, Vicky's tired and blah, 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 because you can't do that. Like, you can't you can't certainly be like, don't touch me. Well, I, you know, yeah, like, I, there's so many cameras. Like, you have to respect your yeah. fans. And it's like, sec- working security for you is crazy because you handle it so well. Like, and, and it's just, you're inundated by people. And, and you are so amazing to watch because you will stand there and meet everybody. Oh, yeah. And exchange stories. That's what I think I ride the and planes for. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the plane part. But I like that <laughs> meeting the people part. You go first class nowadays? Oh, no, man. I'm no, sitting I just, in the back of Southwest by the bathroom. Watching your fan base uh, like meet you is, and, and it's like, that's the cool thing about working at the stores. We see so many comedians come through, but like your fan base is something that is, it's just like, wow, not only are they just connecting, but they're also very respectable, but they're also like, trailer nasty, let's drink yeah, beers. It's so and, fun. So like you think like, oh dude, one of these fucking rowdy fucks is going to try to lay a, lay a kiss on Vicky and I got to fucking say that. If you it, stop somebody from kissing me, I will murder you. Uh, <laughs> right. Are you kidding me? Now I know. Ron, like, the safe word is serious? harder, everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> I'm gonna bring a taser Noted. for you, man. Oh man, but you like, oh, well, and that's just that's part of the like you being. It is funny, awesome like my agents Some people are like, don't a, fucking touch my, me. Dude. My agents like uh, they sent out a thing. It's you know it was like about sexual harassment. So I thought when I first read it, I didn't realize. Have you heard her? They're cutting my damn <laughs> legs out. I, I, I didn't realize she, it was a group letter, right? Yeah. So, but I thought maybe she's, she's I raped every marine at Pendleton. So, I mean, exactly. You're, you're so I, me? I jokingly sent them back an email that said, uh, "So guys, I was worried that maybe a doorman complained about me squeezing oh, their butt." No. And they go, "Do you?" They call me back. They get on a conference call. They go, "Vicky." Are you squeezing doorman's butts? Like, I'm who like, well, isn't? Yeah. Who isn't? I didn't work this hard to get a headline job without squeezing Fucking, a doorman's butt. I mean, And geez. they go, you are not to do that. You don't even you know what you're doing. You are not do- to Vicky, do do, do you that. know what's going on right now? And I go, I go, yeah, are I'm you squeezing saying, some butts. Are you, That's what's yeah, going on. It's an awesome time butt, to be me, I'm dog. Have to squeeze his lose. Is that what you're saying to me? <laughs> they go, yes. Unequivocally, I go. Oh, Vicky, you, I can't say the word. Vicky, you can unequivocally squeeze sir. my ass Thank anytime you, you yeah. want. I got and a so, really easily squeezable you. ass. I appreciate it's that. Anytime. I mean, so I'm like, okay, I get it, but ugh. now if I'm getting a kiss from an audience member, I didn't initiate it. Mm. It's not well. on me. Well, you never know. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you actually, and it turned out to just be somebody that you actually knew. Like someone came yeah. in, like their behavior at the club, and it's like you know they, they like kind of burst their way in, and we're like, "Yo, lines outside," and like, "Oh no, I know Vicky." I'm like, "Everybody, knows Vicky. <laughs> get the fuck out of here," you know. And then then I was like, you know, I'm like, "All right, let's keep an eye on that guy." Like you seem, you never know if it's I crazy at, crazy fan I was or at something the like MGM. that. But. Uh, hotel in uh, Springfield. In, in, there's a there's an MGM. Yeah, isn't that weird? In Springfield, Massachusetts. Like no, I swear Arizona? to God, in the middle of Springfield, Massachusetts, there's, there's a giant MGM, MGM casino. The fuck out. Oh, and, okay. and they have a real fun room there. And uh, it's a stage is five, four or five feet off the ground. And I'm I'm uh, I just walked around giving everybody a squirt from the wine bo- box. And I got back on stage. <laughs> sounds so how lewd. Yeah. So this guy just jumped up on the stage to, with a beer glass yeah and wanted to a squirt so i gave him a squirt from the box and he went down like you should but You're what classy. happened was i didn't think a thing of it because it just seemed fine to me the guy wanted some wine he didn't get any when i was walking around and then everyone after the next night i came on to, the, to work at this and there was four uniform security guards at oh, each yeah. part of the stage because they 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 thought you know that something could good be, or bad could, could happen and that somebody would jump on the stage and they they kind of went I went whatever well you you never know like yeah, that's the thing I get it's, it. like and so there's so you obviously have so many like female fans right. um and <laughs> hell there was a what it was a 40 year br- uh, birthday party last night they right. brought they were 20 deep uh yeah. and half of that crowd was just completely in the bag but exactly. they were cool and they were respectful but um it's it's you never when you say like oh we'll come up on stage you never know if one of the you know the bachelorette party is gonna trip a heel crack her head on the old monitor I, I, or something I, like, and you're like oh god I, I have lifted people up who've fallen on stage oh, shit. you know and I I used to give out my real hotel room for 20 years doing stand up I always said I'm staying in room 231 please assault I me I always did I always really? did nobody ever came 
I knew they wouldn't come, and it Not just helped now. me melt. So one night... Vicky Barbalax, personal security, brought to you by Dos Desperados <laughs> Brewery right in San Marcos, San so Diego. One night I'm at Ventura Harbor Club about two months ago. I said my room number, and I and this guy, this gorgeous guy, and his beautiful girlfriend, after the show, they go, we'll bring you some cocaine. I go, I don't oh, really shit. do cocaine, but I'd love some donuts. Yeah. <laughs> So Lou and Jesse and I go out to dinner after the show. We get back to the hotel, and there's a box of donuts get outside my room. Get the fuck out of here. I go, how did they get through security? How did they get up to my room? It was like a box of donuts and some cocaine. Okay, they I didn't were, know you were fucking serious. Because they were on cocaine, man. And you I, can accomplish you know, things. Yeah, you can really so speed my, through so, that. So after that, I said, you know, I, I shouldn't really give my real hotel. Yeah. My no. daughters are like, Mom, we've been telling you, know you that for years. Oh, my God. You know what? Give them the room next to you. So that way, if you do see the donuts out there, you can grab them. <laughs> Some other poor, poor schmuck is like, what's with the bag of cocaine at my door? <laughs> <laughs> we did look in the box. It was, yeah, uh, was like, but it was like amazing. I'll take the cocaine, but I'm I'm off carbs I, right I, now. I think what happened was he probably went up to the to the car valet and said, "Bring these donuts up to room two thirty seven, just to be adorable." You know what? That's so funny. Uh, so I, I, David Keckner was at the store, and uh, we stayed late after the after the show and uh yeah, i saw him walking down the street and i was like i'll give you a ride and he's like oh thank you ron and nice. like, so he gets in the car and then and, uh um i take him to the hotel and it's like it's close by and uh he's getting out and he's just like a gentleman's wager what year do you think this hotel was built in you know <laughs> The fuck? I'm like I don't know. Like I'm like doing all my construction stuff. I'm mm, based on the Oracle so I'm thinking like I don't know, like seventy two. That's your window. Seventy seventy one to seventy five. Like okay, I'll take that. I'll I'll, I'll go seventy six to seven. I'm like all right. That's what's your bet? You know, like well, wow. I'm a, I'm a I'm a door guy, so I make a lot of money. But I know I don't I don't know how you're faring, so I'll make it easy on you. Like let's wager like a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, that's a gentleman's waiter. Smakes my hand, and then just, and then he goes walking into the hotel like David Keckner just fucking got got a blowjob from the door guy, you know. Like, so he goes into the hotel, and so to be a smartass, and the next day I'm sitting on the on the couch with the wife, uh, drinking Dos Desperados, uh, <laughs> classic classic uh, veteran made brew, the mm. cerveza. Um, but no, so we we're sitting on the on the couch watching uh, the TV, and I was like, you know what? I know where you're staying. Uh, I'm going to call him and fuck with him. And uh, I'm just going to call the hotel and I'm just going to say, hey, would you deliver a message to Mr. Kettner? And, and tell him, because I did some internet research and I found out that the building was built in 1972. And I was right. So I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, chicken dinner. So, uh, but I'm like, I can't, you know, I'm gonna do that. So I call the, the hotel and I'm, the wife is sitting next to me. And I'm, the idea is like, yeah, just, just to call up to his room have the front desk call up to his room and say, hey, 1972 or something like that. Like, that's the thing. And just and then wait to show up at work and see what he says. <laughs> so <clears throat> I call and uh, I was like, yeah, hi, uh, I have a message for David Keckner. And uh, they just fucking patch me through. And I don't know what the fuck oh, he was no. doing, just eating room service right next to the phone or something. He picked it up like halfway through the first ring. Hello. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm just like, Hoo! Hello, this is room service, and we were just wanting to tell you, 1972. <laughs> Click. And so then I go into work. I'm like, my wife is like sitting there right next to me. She's just like, like jaw agape. And uh, I'm like, oh, I might have just got fired, honey. I don't think I should have called the performer's fucking hotel. Like, that was a big, big error. And uh, so I get to work, and he comes up. You know you won. He just slaps that big fucking hand on my shoulder. And he, 1972, room service called. Do you believe that? <laughs> it was just like, ah. He loved it. Like a fucking he loved idiot, it. Dude. He so, loved it. No, that was, it was, I, I like that. That's but it's, so cool. You, yeah, don't ever. Yeah, yeah. your, you your know, hotel my, room my son is sacred well, ground. <laughs> I, I just never, it just never occurred to me that it was a problem. I just also maybe I was secretly hoping somebody would maybe come somebody over the last twenty years. But you know, Lou, uh, my my son-in-law Tim uh, is a retired gunny, and so he he has never seen Philadelphia, the birthplace of the Marines. Yeah. So when I was Tun Tavern to, and Rocky, right on, so Tun Tavern, and there is no Tun Tavern. It's a stupid it's sign. It's a fucking sign they can't, in and a there's parking an empty lot. bar oh, yeah. right across yep. the street. Yep. Why don't they open a bar there so I can uh, see the Marines? I have no exactly. idea. Exactly. But we had a wonderful time. You guys are. And we're heated. staying at this really fancy hotel on the waterfront. Yep. And um, and so. He, I, I, we would come after the show, and the feature act uh, and Matt Bergman and Tim and I were there. And I go, so, you know, I sure would like to go to the roof of this hotel. 
And we don't, you know, <laughs> just, things. you know, if you can make and that happen. So Tim, Tim can make anything happen. That's fucking awesome. So we, we follow him and he, we only had to, he only had to break through one door with his key. Nice. And we get all the way up to the roof <laughs> and he pushes through the, the hatch to the roof. We made it to the roof. Yeah, yeah. First push, no alarm, nothing. We're free. Let's go. There's this long ladder. I'm starting up the ladder after Tim now that I know we're on the roof. So I'm, I'm halfway up this 12 foot ladder. And uh, all of a sudden, ring, ring, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. alarms are going off. So I start laughing and I peed my peed myself. <laughs> and then the ladder. So then I'm coming That's down while go I'm about peeing. Twelve feet down. Yeah, coming down while I'm peeing. My Matt Bergman and I fucking <laughs> just smoke it. We are gone. Now Tim's slipping through the pee, and, he, and we have taken out so far off. He goes, "What? Why'd you leave me behind?" I go, "Cause you're a marine. We're comedians, man. We never leave our man. We leave our man behind, man." man. <laughs> now. I You'll got- never open for me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great. That's a goddamn. That's a killer story. Worst mother-in-law I've, ever. I've got a question, but before I ask, I'm gonna crack open a nice surf mm, easy blonde is that what ale, it is? dos Ooh. desperado it's cerveza. beer. Ooh. It's cerveza. Surf- it's a not surf easy. It's it's surf- spelled surf, He's but a surf on That's funny, He's isn't a it? He but likes he eats a blonde ale, dos desperado. Uh, wonderful ale from our sponsor. I'm going to crack Fantastic. this open before I ask this next question of company, you. And so what's next? What's What happens now? So you're crushing Are across you the country. Are you starting other a than, cult? Other than $10,000 uh, weddings and... Uh, Which I think you could, you could you easily know, make more. What, the easily. AG, you got America's Got Talent in the bag. You got what's next? Is it is it an Emmy? Is yeah, it a TV is show? Is there Trailer Nasty for movie? President 2020 coming I am what's thinking up? about no. a run for the presidency. Ben please, Glebe's, please running, do for, not. Ben please Glebe's do running for president. Ben running for president. I think you'd crush it. I, I mean, I'm, I think you, I'm the Ukrainian. I want, the, I want to see an Emmy on your so, I mean, mantle that's, place. You know, that's is like what, yeah, I called it here first. Lose carrying your Emmy. I want... Like a trophy husband would carry your trophies around I want to have you. a Lego with you and Lou at the Emmys for you right like I, I just All I, right. so Look what's next what's the, I mean, and I know you oh gotta God, keep please invite me to your red you're carpet probably, Emmys you're probably contractually obligated to keep things close to your chest I no, understand no, 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 but, no, but just whatever just, you can tell us there's, there's every, are you on tour right now it seems like so, you're across the country yeah. so the, the tour and the, the Vegas show is just everything mm-hmm. and then you know the, we're, we're putting out any a lot of energy into into pitching things and I just I would be also happy to be on another person's show so yeah. we, I mean all, so we're well we're putting, happy to have you yeah, yeah. And, and just, <laughs> and, what do you mean another person's show I mean I'd show. like to be I wouldn't I don't necessarily need my own show mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so I'd like to go out and audition I want to see you on TV as a I supporting you yeah. don't need to be a star but being supporting yeah, so, anyway, so that's, yeah. that's you know every, I think that's what everybody kind of wants and that's kind of what I want but also I have a full mindfulness of today I am doing that what I always dreamed of doing I have a full mm. calendar of performances and doing headlining hour after hour after hour All, and it's just it's uh, incredible and the Jimmy Kimmel experience is like you know it's going in Las Vegas and seeing your name flash on a big yeah. giant billboard I, it, it's what and, and it's yeah so that's gotta feel fun. pretty good do you have a lot of acting experience like do you have a lot of acting in the in, well, in your past. No, aside no, from stage, I took some. You know, I, I, mean, no, I'm not I, no, I took some acting stuff. classes and I, I, I did a play. I took a lead in a play just to see if I could do it. Remember mm-hmm. my lines, and, and I've done a couple of short films with friends. But yeah, you know, I feel like, I feel like I've I've learned acting from all these hours of performing stage, a stand up yes. because, yeah. and I think that's why so many act comics transition easily into acting. Yes. You want to like? Um, I think it was. In the movie, as good as it gets with Jack Nicholson, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. comedian who was the uh, Greg Kinnear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said he got a. I think he got a, maybe nominated for an Oscar yeah. or an Oscar for it. He said Jack Nicholson could not do stand up in a year and become a, our master. Yeah, yeah. But you can learn and get a. I mean, Oscar nomination in, from stand, from headliner well, to to stand. To, yeah, you to can go acting from... because I mean, yeah, acting's really hard, of course, to be a great actor, and I don't eh. expect that, but the. But to be, it's just, and I'm sure it's really hard. Uh, it, but I, stand up is acting because you're showing a bunch of different emotions. You're putting people on a big ride, you know. Especially when you get into like an hour, because you're taking them on a journey. You're you're showing them different characters, your different emotions. What kills me about stand up, um, specifically in the entertainment industry, is I, I also see a lot of people on their way down, 
It's like it's almost like <laughs> they look at it and they That's think, how I look oh, at this stand up career is this like stand up thing is up. so easy. So as I'm, I'm about to, it, they're they're a has been like actor, TV guy, or like sports guy. It's like. Uh, like Stormy Daniels is doing stand up now. It's right. like right as they're the fucking that well, she's our genius. Yeah. Though she is a, a freaking genius. But, but that stuff upset. She, that's she a little up. hard. It's like <laughs> well, Stormy <laughs> Daniels. We salute you here at honorable discharge. Richard with, Pryor and Stormy she, Daniels. With Richard some, Pryor and yeah. Stormy yeah. Daniels. And we salute like, you with Dos Desperados. Yeah, that's right. Surface a mm. blonde. Um, I love that name, but no, Desperados. But seriously, like that that part about the stand-up thing, where people, it, it takes so much talent, and not just talent, natural talent, but drive and uh, ability to actually build the talent. And it's like, because nobody starts off good at stand-up, but you can start out being a pretty good singer. Like, it's, you gotta well, No, start, man, no, I don't, I don't, I'm gonna have to go ahead and disagree with you there, uh, really? uh, their danger. You, um... You think that? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, day one open just, mics. I mean, no, I don't. Th- I don't think there's anybody that just that can like pick something up and just. Yes, there are people that are naturally <laughs> inclined to be able to do stuff. There's there's people that can uh, play musical instruments that, that are. Just I feel like stand be, you know, up's the least sing, of that. It's. Uh, I, th- I feel like it's performance to the, to a degree. Like 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 Vicky said, like uh. it's acting. You're showing people characters, um, and that's not something like to be relatable. To be something that people want to connect to, which is, I think, is an acting uh, stronghold. Uh, I, I think that's a very, very difficult task. One of the reasons it's so it's such a pleasure to watch Mickey. It's that is that you do belong on. TV. No, no, I'm is saying that, stand up. No, no, I'm, I'm saying like Vicky's care, like your your personality. You are a human being that everybody. I, I've never met anybody that has. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody that's got something mean to say about you, but I've never met him. And I think you're just one of those people that. You you can't help but meet Vicky Barbalack and be like, God, you remind me of this person or something like that, or maybe even like the person that I wanted in my life or something like that, Everybody's like my aunt, my, my buddy's aunt. my buddy's yeah. aunt or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like in a, yeah. So it's you you definitely I, have a I, place. There's no reason. No, no, I think you're misunderstanding you're what I'm saying. But, but what, you're yeah. I'm saying stand up is a lot harder than people act like it is. I think people think that stand up is easy, and it's like, oh, on my that way I, out, okay, I guess that I'll I just, agree with. I, I, I want to get noticed. I want to so become gonna, a stand up yeah. because I can't yeah. do anything. It's like and everyone's and it's the got exact a Netflix opposite, special man. now. Yeah, so it, I mean, I could probably and every, get one. And, and when you actually get into it, you realize like stand up is Not probably either. the hardest of all the entertainment aspects. It's it's the is there least anything that rewarding you think, financially, and it well, just right. takes the what's, most work. Vicky, what's another entertaining thing that you think would be very hard for you to do while stand up? Is natural for you at this point in your life? Like, is there like, yo, dude, I can never be like an opera singer. I, can I never, think like... a Pilates coach would be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one really? thing I would, I would X off. I no. would, no. I'd pay $10,000 to take your Pilates class. I think, yeah, it would be great. We would I, have if Pilates I get, if, and bagels. That's how we would do it. A marriage. You probably could do a, a, at least a successful, like, you probably wouldn't get anyone up on their Pilates game, but you'd probably have a pretty uh, well-attended Pilates class. That would be fun, though. One. We should yeah. actually do it, actually. That's a great idea. I, I, you know what? I, I was or a thinking, spin class, but no. I never can raise myself off the yeah. seat. I want to see you. <laughs> I'm going to see you on, like, Home and Garden HGTV yeah. doing something like doing a trailer nasty. You remember Dave Attell's Insomniac where he would do a gig um, in a show and then he would just go meet people yes. afterwards and that was, like, half the show? Yeah. You should do your trailer nasty where you're like, yeah, I'm doing my thing but actually tow the the Lego trailer around with you and then go meet other people's posh uh, trailers. Did you know Matthew McConaughey lives in an Airstream yeah. like nine months right, out of the right, year? Right. You would, yeah. you couldn't keep me from watching you hanging out with Matthew McConaughey it like comparing trailers. I mean, like that's amazing right down because you know the, the, with, with the tiny home movement and stuff, yeah. there's a lot of you know, it's trailer. There's the trailer nasty. So funny because everyone has this image of trailer parks being so awful, and yes, some of them are. But they're all across America, there is like there's people like taking like living that way with a small community in smaller spaces. They no one wants McMansions anymore. Like it, it's I, there's something to it. That's that a great I, idea. 
Yeah, it's a great idea. I was, yeah. Some yeah people but hang that on the fridge, Ron, like is one. what I just heard. Well, no, where did <laughs> no, Charlie actually, I really <laughs> like that one. I really like that one. No, idea. I'd love to see We've you been talking about a coming. remodel show. Or, where did Trailer right, Nasty right. come from anyway? Call it Trailer What's, Classy. I don't know. I like it. Where did Trailer, trailer Nasty? Nasty? It came from, like, I just, I got tired of being called Trailer Trash. Yeah. And I thought I'd elevate it. Are you Trailer know, Trash? Were you? I feel like I'm more Trailer Nasty. Were you born and bred Trailer Trash? No, you just. I think I grew up in the Beverly Hills. Proud to be. That's just some racist label people I just feel like it's too, on, yeah. it's too I wanted something more specific yeah and it's like when I first started stand up I, I didn't wear like leopard I wore I, did, I had I, I combed my hair followed I, the I, rules yeah, was there, I, yeah. I, I wear like regular dresses oh my god that's right your your headshot at the store has you with straight hair yeah yeah, yeah but on uh, my bouffant yep yeah. and, but I um I was just tired of being at open mics and people going I like the fat chick and I'm like, uh, which fat chick? Sometimes there was two. Plus, I just got Mike tired DeVore? of hearing fat chick, fat chick, yeah. <laughs> and so, so then finally, I just thought I will dress up, and then it worked because then people would say they might say the fat chick and leopard, but they mostly would say the woman in the leopard print. Yeah, yeah. So I did. I started that like 18 years ago, just to, so I didn't hear fat chick all the time. How long and has Trailer, Trailer Nasty, Nasty been a thing? And I think Trailer Nasty. I think I've been doing Trailer Nasty maybe six, seven years. Yeah. And that's that just came out of basically a branding of va- I, what what you just I explained. just liked it and then yeah. and then when AGC happened we like, trademarked like it and everything yeah you know, AGC so they they did you trademark I it? trademarked it Fuck because yeah. of that and Fuck yeah. because I went online and everybody was selling trailer nasty shirts on Amazon of your because yeah, of, yeah. so those were, were they two, really yeah we get had the to fuck pull, out yeah. you had imitators yeah. They were making money. So those were what? Those were two minute sets you were doing each time. Yeah. How tough is? Because I find it harder to sometimes to do the like we did. Kill Tony, and uh, those that's a hard minute, man. One minute sets. Those two minute sets. Anything less than three minutes? Because two minutes is you, like basically when I get my light is I know I got two minutes and two minutes right. is my. Yeah, that's so you're twice just, the time I yeah. get when I know get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, so you're going up and it's just essentially doing your closer. It's it, it that how did that like mess with? Because that messes with me when it's fifty people and someone gives me a minute or two. But to be in front of a like yeah. a theater and the whole world's watching like was that part of in your was that in your loop was that messing with it you just, as well it was total preparation yeah. and hard work I mean dedication I mean like so like, you were driving I worked and, so hard yeah and my yeah. dad used to always running say sets on you the way never to finish show. anything yeah, yeah. and I kept hearing my dad's voice in my head going he would say you never finish anything you never finish anything well, I'm like well I'm five dad <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so so I I was so happy at the end of AGT that I could just look up at Dad in heaven and go, Hey Dad, I finished something that was really hard. Yeah, I finished it. And it, made, it was such a great it, it was such a great thing to um, to get through. If you're a person that doesn't believe you can do anything, you can complete anything. I mean, and that I, it was like a real good thing for me to have gotten through it. But it was it was just um, lots of dedication. I loved doing it. But it was and the staff, the producers, yeah, the, my personal producer. And the, everybody on crew, they couldn't be more fun to be with and loving. They made it so wonderful. I always wondered if there was a bunch of heat coming from, because like, so there you are on stage. You just did two minutes of, and we just talked about how people look at stand up and think it's easy. It's like, oh, this is just some lady talking for two minutes, and then you I got don't think the anybody other... watching him, AGT no, was I'm, under that impression. But, but I'm just but, saying, I mean, when on you a look comedy show, as, yeah, they're like, as hey, as I can do to, this, as yeah. opposed to, and then the the people are standing there like <sighs> catching their breath from like backflip dance breaking stuff, and then there, and then you win, and you you take them to the mat. Like, did you ever do? Did like, you get a bunch of heat? Were there ever any like those no, side eyes? It was like, like no. It was so weird. Bitch. Everyone was so supportive of the other. Yeah. And even even on Champions, and even when I went to Britain for Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. Everyone was so supportive of the other. Everyone. This isn't a dig on you, but uh, the magician one, huh? <laughs> uh, the magic trumps comedy again. I can't go. I can't do a fucking card trick, you know. Ah, sure. I, th- I think magicians actually they do have to be a little bit comedic. At, like oh, the good yeah. ones are. Yeah. I feel like they've got like little punchlines yeah. and stuff that, I have a whole that help distract that. from their their allu- like the illusion that it, they're anybody to hold, listening so. to this mm-hmm. and when you're in Vegas besides my show, Piff <laughs> Piff the Dragon show that yeah. is the most hysterical show in Las Vegas. So oh, funny. I've I mean, got a whole bit about magicians and how like people they're like look at them like nerds, but they're actually the most talented people in the entertainment it's funny business. Because, like when yeah. you look at it, shitty like, magic like, tricks. Oh. Like my mom. rock stars like comedians. Comedians like you know like will make fun of. 
of uh, oh. magician, but there's like all these like different levels of like entertainment. And everybody oh. makes fun of Gallagher. And everyone makes fun and of Gallagher. And Gallagher is not, is a bajillionaire. Uh, Dude, I, yeah, he's I, just hanging out like I don't. Care. I was reading a, something like so. Gallagher sued Gallagher two, and then eventually, no, Gallagher sold it to Gallagher two, who sold it to Gallagher three, and then Gallagher one. Uh, brought Gallagher you know, it's three like to the court to go, It was you know, crazy. Like it, the, uh, it was real. <laughs> like, but it's like the Jabberwockies in Vegas. You know, it's like you just have that mask on. The Gall- Gallagher. There will be Gallagher thirty. There will be Gallagher forty. <laughs> you know, like the, the Gallaghers. Isn't would that live funny? On. You scale your act as a comic. Yeah. So, Franchises. So, so Vegas is like your new home now, or has that been your? Because I know San Diego was kind of like your base. So this I'm, was where... I still have my beautiful new trailer in Oceanside. Yeah. And then. Uh, so we just we just fly in to Vegas every like Monday. When did that somewhere start? else on the, the tour. relationship where it was really starting to become like you ago. associated with Vegas? It's two just started ago. now, huh? And so what happened was Simon Cowell got me these big managers. Yeah, I, my he managers, loved you. He's so great. My managers are Britney Spears' managers, Aerosmith's manager, oh. Paula McCartney's manager. God damn. Those are my managers, and they've never had a comic before, so I'm like their little baby pet project. But they took me around to the Caesars rooms because they have the relationship with everybody there. So I'm walking around with these Caesars execs. They go, what room do you like, Vicky? What room do you like? I go, I'll take the ladies' room, man. Let's start small. <laughs> That's good enough for me. <laughs> and then, and then uh, uh, you know, of course I wanted the Jimmy Kimmel room. And then there was this other room called Cleopatra's Barge. It's, oh, it's, shit. it's yeah, so no, smelly and about. fabulous. Yeah, and yeah. It's just hilarious. There's a barge there and Wayne Newton's working there. I'm like, I love this <laughs> Mr. Room. Wayne Newton? Mr. Wayne Newton? Mr. Wayne Newton? So, um, don't go shine. Don't go so shine. I was like, let me in, in that room be great. I never thought they'd give me Kimmel. And then they, yeah. they called me and they go, or emailed me however they got me and they go, it's the Kimmel room. I'm like, ah! <laughs> You know what's funny, it, actually? I think his, his uh, daughter... Is doing stand up, yes. Do you his know daughter? this? Is and this, his sister's this, involved, maybe. Uh, and if if I'm correct, I believe she's doing Reds down the street on Wednesday. His and it's his daughter or his sister? Uh, I'm I don't know. I don't know them well enough to right. to say, but I was just like, Oh, Kimmel, Kimmel is that Reds? Like Kimmel I, like I Kimmel just Room recently and like, heard I'm like that okay, his damn. sister is involved in and I'm here like this Jimmy Kimmel, is he a big deal? Like how's he getting all these all this hype? Was Jimmy Kimmel like? Who is this guy? He's coming out of nowhere. Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> he's he's everywhere. amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's hilarious, right? And like he built this room, like you dream of, like you just if you want to make a room, the shape of it, it's like you hold your arms out, it's like you're hugging the audience. Yeah, get the fuck it's out just of an here. unbelievable feeling in that room. It's like really? perfect the perfect comedy room, the huh? perfect comedy yeah. room, perfect. Yeah, except you know La Jolla, yeah. it's still a great room. <laughs> Dude. You know, except and, for even there's two places in my world. I think the Comedy Store Hollywood, the Comedy Store La Jolla, and the Jimmy Kimmel Room for, for my, wherever I've, I've yeah. been. What's your favorite ones in New York? And if you yeah, you I only went to one, Gotham. Gotham. And I had the time oh. of my life. So, all right. So I want to, if you, there's, a, there's a couple of comedians, and this is a shout out to Sonia and Eddie, these guys. Uh, every year I go to New York and I try to do comedy uh, and I just try to hit everything. And I, a couple of years ago I met Sonia and Eddie. They run these this group called Comedians on the Loose. And they get like a monthly or bi-monthly or bi-weekly show at Gotham. Nice. And so it's just like I've been watching them because they like started out, you know, like just doing it like their little venues, uh, smaller venues around uh, New York and stuff. And now it's like, cool, man, you got fucking Gotham like once. That's like, and that's a great grab for people that are like, you know, producing shows and stuff yeah. like that. So now my hope is, I mean, you know, because I don't have AGT credit or anything, but it'd be cool if. Please shout out Eddie and Sonia. Uh, right on. You know, I mean, yeah. maybe throwing down Gotham. That is a beautiful room, too. That's the room wonderful too. thing that's about New York is there's so many fucking yeah. cool clubs in New York. I would have yeah. thought the cellar. Cause, I mean, Seinfeld I haven't even always been in goes there. to... Really? I've Seinfeld's... Never, I, well, this Gotham is the comic guy. strip. Comic strip. Gladys Simon. Seinfeld's open mic. First open mic card yeah, is, on, well, is, is, is on the wall. Wow. Uh, there. And so it's, it, it's a cool... And it's, it's but tiny. His, it's kind of like the, uh, the the Comedy Palace Gold Room. Yeah, and his, it's like a small rectangular room. His comeback. He he started the same uh, show that Eddie Murphy. Those two started the same exact open mic show. Damn. And um, his his comeback was all Gotham. He started in Gotham, and that's what he did. It is one, a beautiful room. Uh, in, what is one comedy icon that you've come in contact with that you were just starstruck? You're like, holy shit! I am meeting blank. 
Well, I mean, like, is I've anyone met, really blown I've, you like, away, I've, or are you always just the brightest I mean, I've, star I've, in the room? I was pretty <laughs> excited, what, you know, to 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 be on with Chris Rock a couple of times and made him, but. George Wallace, just to be in the, really? in the hallway with him. Really? And I remember one time, Mitzi, she had me uh, go on after George Wallace. And he just looked at me and he goes, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's throaty. And I swear to you, I can't remember how I did. Wow. I imagine I did terrible. But... Um, or maybe I imagine I treaded water. I don't yeah. remember, but I remember. That's probably good, though. I saw him a couple of weeks ago, and I go, "Man," he goes, "How are you doing?" I go, "Man, George, this great." And uh, I just want you to know, my favorite memory of this whole time good I've been luck. at the comedy store is when Mitzi had me follow you, and you said, "Good luck." He goes, "I never said that." Yeah. I go, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did," and I'm you glad you did because it was so well. hilarious and so true, man. You, when you got to own that when you're George it, Wallace. It's like the movie Taken, like the good look. <laughs> yeah. I have a very particular yeah. set of skills. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, you know what? We, yeah, we've we taken cool. up enough of your goddamn time. You, we ran out of cheese. We ran out of so cheese. And I'm going to say, this is wonderful. I'm almost out of beer. So what happens? So so you're out of San Diego this weekend. Then where? What uh, goes well, on? Go back, where can on we Tuesdays? catch you? Back to Las Vegas Tuesday, and then I'm going to Virginia Beach after that, and just uh, I have a website called Vicky Barberlack Comedy. My tour schedule's there. Uh, there's a section called Ask Vicky, and I answer every single ask and letter. Yeah. So it's okay. a really great way to ask me questions if you have a direct question. And I can personally I, attest to that. She will literally yeah. stay there and, and tell you get your quote. Like, and it's, I, it's not a bot uh, on Vicky Barberlack. <laughs> and, and I love the shows because we meet people after the shows and take pictures. And people ask me out. They ask me on their boats. They ask me to their house. They ask me to brunch. And, uh, and they're so surprised when I show up. They actually, I don't <laughs> think like, they really thought I was coming. They like, didn't even make shit, the brunch. No. Are your <laughs> shows tonight sold out? The, like the first I'm one say, is, yeah. I think the second one. Oh, yeah, your numbers, I, yeah. They, I think they are. They're sold now. out, yeah. Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. It's Vicky, yeah. And it's for Vicky, sure. of course. So, and it's just great fun. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, if you guys are in Vegas, come to the Kimmel Go Room. Kimmel's. And then otherwise, just look at my website because uh, I know I... I really like firemen, so I think um, <laughs> I'm going to be in a fire convention in April in Indiana. You should do a fireman I calendar. Got like, you should find. <gasps> I got a no, lot no, no. of Oh, firemen my God. Friends. She's like, brainstorming. Throwing this out there. Take. Make it a point to go to firehouses in your city. Yes. Take a sexy photo and then release a calendar. Twelve months, oh different God. city with a different okay. sexy fireman. Done. I'm doing mm. a benefit Please. for the Bodega Bay. I will always give you ideas. Benefit? Remember last night that. you were like, "You yes. need management." Yes. Like someday yes. I'll be, I'll be worth it yes. for you to manage me. Yes. But I want to give you yes. these ideas between yes. that and bandanas. Yes. Stop. I already ordered the bandanas, by the way. Oh fuck yes. God, wait, wait, what yes. are these, what are he these said, bandanas? He All said, right. sell bandanas with the trailer nasty. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. They cost nothing to fucking make. Yep. You know, and people are like, sweet, and you always need bandanas. They, there's this, a multitude of purposes. Yeah, the trailer nasty hat yeah, we're looking at, yeah, but a bandana but version. It's right. also, it's like, yeah. I mean, you don't have to haul around 500 double XL t shirts, 200 mediums. Oh, I'm yeah. out of that. No, it's a piece of cloth. The price is simple. Yep. The price is, you know, the cost is, I mean, it's. It's, it's one suitcase over- instead of 30. So yep. then, you know, Jimmy Cut can your fly overhead. first class now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he'll be pissed because he doesn't have all the T-shirts to sleep on. Jeez, J- Jimmy just went gold on Delta. The dog fucking, just got gold. I heard about Yeah. Lou, it's talking. He's like, have you been to the Sky Lounge? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, game changer, dog. I can't you can leave your luggage anywhere. <laughs> you just she throws your purse down. <laughs> We talk to people. He fucking. Well, the only thing is, there's no smoke. They can't get high in there. Does he get mad? That's the. Does Lou get? Lou's an old Smokey like, from back in the day. Yeah. See, he can remember the color of the corduroy jeans of the guy who sold him acid at yeah. Altamont was, but he yes. cannot remember your fucking name when he brings you up. A, <laughs> the first four years I was with him, he only called me baby, honey, smack cheese. Did you know it was kind It's of absolutely none of my business, but I'm just going to say a Lou Brockman orgasm probably would sound amazing. There is nothing like it. I'll bet. I, and I that's can, your story. All I, I don't can do is know. not st- I stifle dream. my laughter every time we have sex. <laughs> I put a sock and just want to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you wake him up. <laughs> it's so funny because nobody ever asked me that before, but that is so freaking true. I am dying laughing at the end of every night. I'm going, and he's like, "How was it?" I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god. I'm gonna end oh, this yes. show Thank on Lou you. Brockman's <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> so check, oh my god. Yeah, check Vicky out anytime. Vicky, Vicky, Congratulations on your podcast, guys. Oh my god. You know, I, I get asked to do a million podcasts, but um, I want to support your content because of what you're doing, who you are, and, and I'm so honored that you asked me. Thank oh, you so much. I, lo- I, I loved it. Thank you. Let, it's, it's thank this you is enough. great for all the veterans that need to, 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 to be listening because, you know, you, I, my, I just know from personal experience that the journey back is rough yeah. and to be together, camaraderie, understanding each other and sharing your your Tell your strength. friends. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yeah. Be well. Honorable veterans. Be Honorable well. discharge. Be well. Be <laughs> well. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. That's our show. That's Honorable Discharge. You guys are slutty as fuck. San Diego, Studio 395. I'm your man, Ron Ripley. My host, T.D. Cunningham, just killing it. Hey. The beautiful, the lovely, the wonderful, the ever-elegant, trailer classy, Miss Vicky Barbalak. Thank, thank you, you so much. Stay trailer nasty, everybody. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my God. I'm, who yeah, else is man, horny? Who else is horny? Episode. Thank you, Vicky. Thank Holy you guys so shit. much. That was a great episode. That was fun.